When the gates of hell were open, the world fell. Monsters emerged from those gates, causing havoc in the world. Only a few humans began to awaken a supernatural power. They are known as the saviors of humanity, also called players. Our MC of this story is a F-rank player, the great steel emperor called Lee Hyun Wook. He was called the last savior of humanity. But at this moment, he is just a soldier of the Anti-Monster Troop, AMT, a group where all players who have awakened their skills are required to serve. At the AMT shooting range, he is being punished together with the other soldiers. As it turns out, they are being punished for losing 9 spent bullet casing. As our MC manipulated another bullet into his mouth discreetly, it is apparent that he is the culprit for the missing cartridges. Upon consuming the bullet, Hyun Wook received a notification from the system that the weight of metal that he can manipulate increased to 300 grams. He wondered how he ended up in the army for the second time. In the final battle during the past life, the world was in chaos and everyone in the city was dead. In the end, it wasn't the monsters that killed them all but other players. As the mastermind looked down at the last hero, the defeated Great Steel Emperor, the mastermind removed his mask to reveal his face. He told Hyun Wook that they are divine beings that judged humanity as his fellow teammates surrounded Hyun Wook but Hyun Wook said they are just plain villains. He said if he had more time to grow stronger, he would defeat all of them easily. The mastermind said even if he knew earlier, F rank like him would make no differences. As another villain walked towards Hyun Wook with his giant sledgehammer, Hyun Wook called out the mastermind's name, Gordon Pracy, just as the hammer was swung at him, ending his life. Hyun Wook did not expect himself to regress like in the manhwa. Upon consumption of the bullet, the system informed him that it will take some time to absorb the metal. He realized that his skills have all returned to the starting point but he hated that he was back at the army again as he suffered through the rest of the punishment. As the various squads began to queue for the cookhouse for lunch, the instructor called for Hyun Wook's squad, the standby squad. He told Hyun Wook that they need to complete a task before they can eat. Hyun Wook said that they just came back from training. He then remembered who this person was, his name is Oh Sanguk, the human trash of the army. Sanguk said that the F rank support squad is useless and should volunteer to do more work to help the combat squad. His treatment toward the support squad is because it is known that an F class is unable to grow and become stronger. He continued to berate Hyun Wook, attracting the attention of the surrounding crowd. Noting Hyun Wook's defiance, Sanguk activated his spell, asking if Hyun Wook wishes to challenge him who is a D ranked. In a twist of events, Hyun Wook accepted the request to do the task but asked to be fed first, catching Sanguk by surprise. Hyun Wook reminded him that everyone is watching them and he wouldn't want to be known as being abusive if he ever becomes famous. Unable to escalate the issue further, Sanguk asked them to go eat and quickly complete their tasks and ordered the crowd to disperse. Hyun Wook asked his squad mate, Park Junmo, to go ahead as he does not feel like eating. Sanguk wondered why Hyun Wook felt different today. As Hyun Wook turned into a remote corner, he cursed having to endure this but it is nothing compared to what he had suffered under the traitor, Gordon Tracy. He does not wish to cause any troubles in the army or it will delay his plans to get stronger. As the metal absorption is completed, a notification appears informing him that the amount of metal he can manipulate has increased to 309 grams. As he pulled out a bunch of spoons, he acknowledged that he cannot have anyone knowing that he can level up yet. In the cookhouse, everyone was complaining about the missing spoons. As Hyun Wook began to consume the metal spoon and absorb it, Hyun Wook pulled out his bayonet. With a weight of around 140 grams, Hyun Wook would only be able to control one if he wishes to add more weight to it for greater impact. Consuming cartridges and spoons will take too much time to reach his previous levels. He looked at the structure far away and wondered if that was his only option. He has three days to prepare himself before he has to defeat a boss mob at level 1. He used his skills to move the bayonet in midair, excited for what is to come. Three days later, at the fifth guard post, Hyun Wook and Park Junmo are doing their night guard duty. Park Junmo suddenly said to Hyun Wook that he had changed recently. Hyun Wook asked if he made him feel uncomfortable while he was checking the time on his watch. Looking at the system notification, Hyun Wook had already increased the weight of metal that he can control to 1,359 grams after three days of preparation. Park Junmo said that the change was for the better. Hyun Wook then asked if he trusts him. After he said yes, Hyun Wook began to put his plan into motion. Somewhere nearby, a portal appeared and goblins began to come out of the portal. They looked at the nearby military camp, prepared to ambush it. Out of nowhere, a bayonet flew at a goblin and knocked it into the ground. The bayonet then flew back to the nearby Hyun Wook, who greeted them eagerly after waiting for them for three whole days. The attacked goblin stood up and Hyun Wook realized that he failed in his ambush as he is still pretty weak. 
As the goblin charged towards him, Hyun Wook controlled the bayonet and removed the goblin's head. Upon defeat, the goblin's lifeless body fell in front of him and a strange gemstone appeared in front of him. Hyun Wook controlled the gemstone into his mouth and consumed it, shocking the surrounding goblins. Hyun Wook had already known from his past life that this is a mana steal, which will increase his mana and help him get stronger as well. Hyun Wook is determined to eat everything that he comes across from now on to get even stronger. As he controlled his bayonet back to his side, he declared that his feast shall begin now. Earlier, back at the guard post 5, Hyun Wook told Junmo that he can sense multiple metal reactions moving right now. Junmo thought Hyun Wook could only sense metals that he can see but Hyun Wook lied to him. Junmo thought they should report this but Hyun Wook explained that the guys at the command center would not believe that an F-class can sense an unidentified entity that he couldn't see. Junmo then asked what they should do. Hyun Wook suggested that he would go check while Junmo continues to stay here in the guard post and under no circumstances should he report to the superiors. Hyun Wook did not want them to be involved as they may claim all his battle loot. Facing the incoming goblins, Hyun Wook controlled his bayonet and launched them at the goblins. Hyun Wook dodged all the goblin sword swings and controlled his bayonet to cut the Achilles tendon of the nearby goblins. Hiding above a tree, a different kind of goblin looked angrily at this situation. As the goblins with their tendons severed continued to scream out loud on the ground, another goblin swung its sword at him. Hyun Wook controlled another sword to deflect the attack. Before the goblin could react, Hyun Wook's bayonet spun quickly and slashed its throat. Upon its death, another man of steel appeared. Hyun Wook threatened to kill them all if they tried to backstab him again as he continued to instill fear in the surviving goblins. As beings with low intelligence, Hyun Wook was able to instill fear in them to make them hesitate when attacking him. Hyun Wook continued to scan the area as he attempted to look for the boss monster, the goblin shaman who was hiding in the tree. Hyun Wook pretended to reach out for the mana steel on the floor to give it an opening to try to lure out the goblin shaman. As expected, the goblin shaman began to make his move. It pulled out a mana stone and began casting its spell. As the spell casting is completed, the mana stone broke and earth spikes began to burst out of the ground. A soldier back in the camp felt the ground shaking but his doubts were dismissed by his superior. As the dust settled, there were only dead bodies of goblins lying on the ground and Hyun Wook was nowhere to be found. Hyun Wook had successfully found the goblin shaman and fired a sword at it. The goblin shaman managed to deflect the sword but Hyun Wook revealed that it was just a distraction and fired his bayonet right at its throat. However, Hyun Wook was surprised as the goblin shaman had caught the bayonet with its bare hands before it could cut its throat. Hyun Wook, who remained calm, challenged the goblin shaman that he will slice them all up. However, it was just a bluff as the surrounding goblins were no longer in fear since their boss had appeared. Hyun Wook also had low mana after the earlier fight. Left with no choice, he released the safety trigger and aimed his gun at the goblin shaman. He is determined to kill the goblin shaman and consume them even if it meant getting into trouble with the army. However, a voice appeared behind him. It was his squad mate, Park Junmo, calling out for Hyun Wook. The goblin shaman immediately ordered his goblins to attack the unsuspecting Junmo. Before the goblin reached Junmo, Hyun Wook asked him to get down and he fired his rifle at the goblin, pushing it back. Hyun Wook then launched another sword at the goblin but it was easily deflected. Hyun Wook then quickly rushed to the goblin and fired bullets into its mouth. Just as he turned around to prepare to engage the rest of the horde, they had already escaped using the portal. Hyun Wook realized the shaman is more cautious than he thought. The command center asked for a status report through the walkie-talkie as they had heard the gunfire. Hyun Wook answered and said that the fifth post had discovered a gate within the area and goblins had appeared but had left the current area after the first skirmish. Luckily, they have zero casualties for now as he looks over at the frightened Junmo who is trembling on the ground. The command center then ordered the fifth post to defend their post. Hyun Wook then realized that she is going to arrive soon. AMT's paladin, Lieutenant Seo Yunha. Once she arrives, it will be like Hyun Wook's past life and she will stop the gate and take all weapons and become the military's belongings. This will include the legendary item, Adamantium. This is the item that made Hyun Wook the Steel Emperor. If he missed this opportunity, the next chance to get an adamantium will be four years later. By then, it will be too late and he will end up suffering the same fate as before. He will need to finish this battle before the standby team arrives. Hyun Wook analyzed the goblins' next move as they will be looking for a living human sacrifice and they won't risk going into the dense populated city. Before they could guess their next location, the sixth post reported their dire situation through the walkie-talkie. Hyun Wook responded and said they will help to support the sixth post, ignoring the command's order for them to defend their post. Junmo begged him to reconsider as their disobedience would be enough for a military trial. 
Hyunwook explained that the sixth post consists of archers and mages and would all die without any support. Junmo asked what he can do by himself but Hyunwook said he won't be alone as he also has Junmo ask his allies. The sixth post continues to report their casualties and requests for assistance. The command center informed that the rapid response unit had departed and ordered the sixth post to guard the post with their lives. However, the situation is dire and they might not be able to survive till then. Horde of goblins are banging on the guard post, attempting to break through the barrier. The soldiers inside feared that the barrier would not last long and wondered and the reinforcement could arrive. They then realized that the outside got quiet all of a sudden. A bunch of debris and rocks began floating around the guard post. As the goblin shaman broke his magic stone, the rocks began to slam against the guard post. The sixth guard post soldiers realized that they were being attacked by a boss monster. They knew that they intended to capture them alive and raise them to their altar and take out their hearts while alive to complete their ritual. The injured soldier contemplated ending his life right now for a quick painless death. As the goblin shaman is about to launch a second wave of attack, they hear from the walkie-talkie that someone is here to help them. Hyunwook asked the archer to load the bow and shoot the arrow at the light outside. He reminded him to use the fire skill when loading the bow. Even though the archer followed the order, he wondered if a single archer would be able to make any differences. While waiting for a signal, he then saw a light flashing. It was Hyun Wook who used his flashlight as a signal while being on top of a goblin. Hyun Wook then used his skill to fire the trigger and the fire arrow began to fly in his direction. Hyun Wook jumped out of the way just before the arrow arrived to hit the goblin in the chest and exploded. Hyun Wook intends to use this strategy to save his mana by using the archer's destructive power. As the goblin shaman fired the rocks at Hyun Wook, he easily moved out of the way. He then asked the archer to reload his bow and aim at the light again. The goblin shaman looked at Hyun Wook as he continued to use the same strategy to kill off more goblins. Nearby, Private Park Junmo was moving slowly in the bush. He was instructed to find the goblin shaman but was worried that he would die as soon as he sent a signal. He looked at the battle, even though Hyun Wook said he will only distract them, it seems like he is finishing the whole gate on his own. Just then, a goblin saw Park Junmo and swung its sword at him. Before he was hurt by the goblin, Hyun Wook's bayonet deflected the sword. Hyun Wook swiftly arrived at their location and continued to use the flashlight and fire bow method to defeat the attacking goblin. Park Junmo is stunned at Hyun Wook's fighting ability and wonders if he is still the same Corporal Lee Hyun Wook. Hyun Wook wondered when the goblin shaman would appear as he had been killing many of his underlings. Hyun Wook's mana has reached a new low point of only 12%. Hyun Wook suddenly heard Park Junmo's voice on the walkie-talkie, begging for his help. The goblin shaman had grabbed hold of Park Junmo and was holding him hostage. Park Junmo apologized as he had really tried. As Hyun Wook summoned his bayonet back to his side, the goblin shaman pressed his staff closer to Park Junmo's throat. Left with no choice, Hyun Wook released control of his bayonet and made the gesture to surrender as the rest of the goblins surrounded him. As the goblins were about to launch their attack at Hyun Wook, Hyun Wook said this is all thanks to Park Junmo that this is checkmate. With that, he controlled the trigger of Junmo's rifle that was aimed directly at the goblin shaman's stomach, firing bullets at him. Hyun Wook then immediately got out of the goblin's attacks as he continued to charge towards the shaman's direction. He called out to Park Junmo and was relieved to hear his response back. He then continued to chase the goblin shaman and launched his bayonet at its back and it was blocked by his leather armor. At this point, Hyun Wook's mana only had 9% left. The goblin shaman was rushing towards the portal, attempting to escape. Hyun Wook was too far behind to catch up to the goblin shaman. However, just as the goblin shaman is about to reach the portal, he realized that the goblin shaman had made a necklace with a few bullets on it. He then used his remaining mana to strangle the goblin shaman with its bullet necklace and sent his bayonet to land the killing blow. With 0% mana remaining, Hyun Wook realized that the current body is too weak and is determined to train it to become stronger after this. Just then, a beam of light appeared in the sky. It was the holy light, signaling the arrival of the paladin and the rapid reaction squad. Hyun Wook continued to dig into the shaman's body to find the legendary item. As he just dug out the adamantium from the goblin's body, they have arrived. The soldiers asked Hyun Wook to put his hands up and turned around. By then, Hyun Wook had just put the adamantium in his mouth. As he turned around to report his name and rank, he had already swallowed the adamantium and all that was left was the goblin blood surrounding his mouth. As they carried Hyun Wook up with a stretcher, Lieutenant Seo Yunha checked the surroundings. With the portal still open, she suspects that the enemies are still around. She was surprised that four soldiers could defeat the boss monster by themselves and soon realized a bigger mystery. 
she realized that the goblins all had similar wounds and were the works of one man. The system notification popped up, informing Hyun Wook that he had consumed a legendary item. As the item is enchanted, he will develop magic skills similar to the enchantment. Hyun Wook began to laugh on the stretcher after he saw the notifications, relieved that he had finally achieved his goals. Yun Ho was surprised that he was laughing in a situation like this. Hyun Wook would also receive a rare ability and can now detect all metals within his range of control. He finally got back his skill and can feel the resonance of the metals around him. He declared his triumphant return as the Steel Emperor, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. After a few days, the soldiers had already heard of the rumors that a F-ranked had defeated the boss mob by himself. The rumor suggested that the sixth post workers were just hiding in the guard post until a F-ranked corporal appeared and sliced up all the goblins. They all couldn't believe that a F-ranked can do all that. Nearby, Sergeant San Gook was interrogating the archer from the sixth guard post, Private Park and IL, demanding the truth of what happened the previous night. The other private also began to taunt Park and IL to keep his salute up. Sangook then turned to him and asked if he could do a gate raid with three other soldiers. Private Lee Won Suk, known as the next term ace with barbarian traits, replied that this is impossible. They did not see the sixth post workers defeating the boss mob themselves and guessed that it could just be a final attack by some goblins who fell behind from the herd. Sangook then said sternly that if an F rank went wild, it would become a military discipline issue and it will be something that they have to fix. Lee Won Suk eagerly agreed with this suggestion as well. Back at the battalion commander's room, Hyun Wook reported to the battalion commander upon his request. He hated that they still wanted to question him despite the incident ending well. Paladin CO Yunha and Wizard Lieutenant Lee Min Hee were in the office as well. The battalion commander Lieutenant Major Kim Kang Siak asked if Hyun Wook was the one who disobeyed the order to stay put and forcefully repelled the first round of the gate. Hyun Wook prepared his answer carefully as one mistake and he might end up in a military trial. Hyun Wook replied honestly and said that he seized the gate while on duty and responded immediately. Commander Kim Kang Siak said he read the report but couldn't understand how a F-ranked could have survived the attack, exerting an intense pressure just from his questioning. Hyun Wook knew that if he stepped back here, his military life would be over. He then told the commander that he felt wronged and scammed by the commander. Lee Min Hee scolded him for speaking to the battalion commander this way, but was stopped by the commander as he asked Hyun Wook why he said that. Hyun Wook eagerly replied that there was something that he emphasized every training, something that he said without fail each time. He always said that no matter how low rank they are, as long as they follow AMT's teaching, even a E ranked can face trolls. According to his teaching, F ranked like Hyun Wook would struggle against trolls, so fighting goblins shouldn't be impossible. He further explained that although he did go against command's order to wait, if he hadn't gone to support the sixth guard post, all of them would have been killed. Hyun Wook believed that he had given a rational reason and would now attack emotionally. He then quoted the commander, For a true soldier, there are no ranks. Prepare for the worst and fight with your all. Hyun Wook said he had followed the teachings as a soldier under the battalion commander that he respected greatly. He continued to explain with great passion that he took what he learned from the difficult training to heart and helped the sixth post by putting his life on the line. The only reason why he could endure his military life while being mocked as a lowly F ranked was because he felt the true military mindset from the battalion commander. To see the results of the battle being denied by the battalion commander made him feel his entire military life being denied. Hence, he felt scammed. Battalion commander Kim Kang Seo, right when he was appointed as second lieutenant, the gates began opening. He almost died in a fight against the orcs but returned to the army without hesitation and became an early foundation member of the AMT. In other words, he is a soldier down to the bone. After hearing Hyun Wook's passionate speech based on his own teachings, how could he send Hyun Wook to the military trials? As Kim Kang Seo came forward and grabbed Hyun Wook by his shoulders, he asked if that was indeed his belief. In a surprising turn of event, he told Hyun Wook that he is now a non-commissioned officer. At the same time, he had completed the absorption of the adamantium metal and obtained a new skill, steel physique. He is now able to strengthen a part of his body with this new skill and it can be improved by consuming more high-hardness magic metal. This result surprised everyone present, including Hyun Wook. A few days later, at the training room, Hyun Wook was exercising while wondering how he got into a bigger mess just to avoid being sent to the guardhouse. He recalled Lee Min Hee's objections as no F ranked has become a non commissioned officer in AMT before. Thanks to his persuasion, Hyun Wook was able to buy some time by saying that he will think about it. He had wanted to live a low profile to avoid attracting any further attention. Suddenly, Lee Won Suk appeared behind him and asked if he was done with the bench, even though there were many other empty ones next to them. He taunted Hyun Wook and said that he would be embarrassed if the famous person from their unit is only lifting this much weight in the gym. 
the commotion attracted the attention of the nearby crowd. Sergeant San Guk and his goons were nearby and it was obvious that Lee Won Suk was sent by him to embarrass Hyun Wook. Hyun Wook knew that if he back off now, San Guk will start to openly bully him like he did in his last life. Although he had just decided to stay under the radar, he had no choice but to stand up for himself now. He then issued a challenge to Lee Won Suk to spar with him. This caught everyone by surprise. Everyone in the bunk heard of this private match and all went to the gym to watch. As they are preparing for the sparring match in the ring, Lee Won Suk promised to teach Hyun Wook a lesson. As Hyun Wook prepared for the sparring match, Lee Won Suk promised to teach him a lesson. The crowd had already gathered around the sparring ring and Lee Won Suk kickstarted the match with a punch towards Hyun Wook. At the entrance of the military base, a visitor was surprised that Choi Yoon Joon went on vacation. He was disappointed as Choi Yoon Joon had the talent to be a sword saint and he wanted to see for himself. The visitor was none other than Warren Officer Cheon Myango, the Black Tiger unit's tactical instructor. The Black Tiger is AMT's most elite special forces unit. The soldier told Warren Officer Cheon that while Sergeant Choi Yoon Joon is the current ace, there is another soldier who has the potential to be the next ace, and he even has the barbarian trait. The soldier told Warren Officer Cheon that he should not leave empty-handed and should just go take a look. Back at the sparring ring, Hyun Wook was easily dodging Lee Won Suk's punches. He was pushed to the corner of the ring by Won Suk. Before Won Suk could land a decisive punch at Hyun Wook, Hyun Wook was able to row out of the corner to avoid the punch. He then taunted Lee Won Suk to continue his attack with a gesture. As Lee Won Suk prepared for another round of attack, the soldier had brought Warrant Officer Cheon to the sparring right. He said that the stage has been set and this was a perfect opportunity for an audition. As the soldier asked him about his opinion about Lee Won Suk, Officer Cheon said that his punches are powerful but these all mean nothing if he couldn't land any of them. The soldier remains convinced that if he could land it with more experience, it will be a grand slam. Sanguk was unhappy with the progress of the match and asked Lee Won Suk not to go easy on Hyun Wook. The crowd was unhappy as well as many believed it would be an easy match for the future ace. Lee Won Suk had not been going easy on him as he had felt that his body was very heavy for some reasons. As it turns out, Hyun Wook had been controlling the metal within Lee Won Suk's boots. This made him feel like he was fighting in a swamp. With his movement restricted, he could not hit Hyun Wook with his punches. Lee Won Suk asked for a timeout as his body felt strange. Hyun Wook taunted him further and it enraged him, causing him to use his skill, body strengthening, and entered in a berserker mode. Hyun Wook remained unfazed as he prepared for the upcoming fight. Warrant Officer Cheon was surprised at the use of body strengthening as this was already outside the domain of a normal sparring match. However, he was even more surprised at Hyun Wook's calm demeanor. It was like watching a match between an angry buffalo and a leopard who has its fangs hidden. He was beginning to enjoy this exciting match. Lee Won Suk promised to end the match with one punch and charged at Hyun Wook quickly. His punch was so powerful that it sent Hyun Wook flying into a corner of the ring. The crowd began cheering for Lee Won Suk but Lee Won Suk felt strange as he felt the impact as though he was punching steel barefisted earlier. This was because Hyun Wook also had a body strengthening skill that allowed him to turn a part of his body into steel. Hyun Wook continued to taunt Lee Won Suk and called him a pig. Lee Won Suk was even more enraged by the insults and charged at Hyun Wook. As he missed another swing at Hyun Wook, Hyun Wook had already moved to his side and, with a strengthened leg, kicked Lee Won Suk at the back of his knees, causing him to collapse. Hyun Wook then continued to punch at the fallen Lee Won Suk, shocking the crowd, including Sanguk. Warrant Officer Cheon looked at the match eagerly as Hyun Wook had finally shown his fangs. Knowing that he has bit his neck, Warrant Officer Cheon does not expect Hyun Wook to let it go easily. However, Lee Won Suk recovered and grabbed Hyun Wook high in the air. He said that he does not know what tricks Hyun Wook used but he intends to end the match right away. Lee Won Suk then attempted to throw Hyun Wook into the ground. We then wonder how our MC, Hyun Wook, would get out of this mess. In a split-second response to imminent danger, Hyun Wook executed a flying armbar, swiftly locking up Lee Won Suk's arm and elbow. Lee Won Suk stopped his punch as if he had landed it, he would have broken his own hand. Warrant Officer Cheon was impressed that he had better battle instincts than expected. Warrant Officer Cheon doubted Hyun Wook's ability to defeat Lee Won Suk, who had enhanced his body with strength-enhancing techniques. He questioned whether he had overestimated Hyun Wook's prowess. Lee Won Suk cursed at Hyun Wook and attempted to punch him with his other arm. However, Hyun Wook had loosened his grip and escaped his grasp before the punch landed. He then turned to Lee Won Suk's back to choke his neck. Lee Won Suk attempted to use his strength to pull Hyun Wook off him, but without his knowledge, Hyun Wook had also strengthened his arms with his new skill. 
This caused Lee Won Suk to be surprised that he couldn't overpower Hyun Wook with his pure strength. Hyun Wook faced additional challenges due to his low rank, struggling as he pushed his skill beyond its usual limits, resulting in a system warning. The two began their battle of stamina. The onlookers asked Sergeant Sangguk if they should stop the fight as they knew Lee Won Suk wouldn't tap out. Hyun Wook stares intensely at Sangguk, hoping that this would serve as a warning for him, frightening Sangguk. Lee Won Suk was not willing to lose to AF ranked and be humiliated in front of others. After all, he is the future ace. To everyone's surprise, he successfully activated body strengthening for the second time, an impressive feat however, it would mean nothing if he couldn't get out of the chokehold. Warrant Officer Cheon eagerly looks at the match to see who is the ultimate winner. After a grueling battle of stamina, Lee Won Suk finally succumbed, collapsing from exhaustion. Warrant Officer Cheon was glad to see his prediction is correct and New Hyun Wook is the real deal and the ultimate beast. As the crowd checked on Lee Won Suk, they were relieved that he was just unconscious. Park Junmo went over to congratulate Hyun Wook while Hyun Wook turned to look at Sangguk, who was avoiding his glare. Warrant Officer Cheon then came forward to greet Hyun Wook and asked for his name. Hyun Wook saluted him and reported his name and rank while he wondered why this person was here. Warrant Officer Cheon also introduced himself as the raid tactics instructor of the Black Tiger unit and told Hyun Wook that he was very impressed with his duel. He then offered Hyun Wook his name card and asked if he was interested in joining their special warfare raid. Everyone was surprised to hear Hyun Wook being offered a position in the Black Tiger unit, the best troop in the AMT. However, Hyun Wook explained that he is AF ranked player. Warrant Officer Cheon said that rank is just a standard set by normal people and they need a warrior like him. Hyun Wook is annoyed at all these people trying to lay a claim on him. Hyun Wook resisted committing to military service, viewing it as confining and fearing it would hinder his pursuit of the villain group. He took the name card and thanked Officer Cheon and said he will give it a thought. Sangguk saw the interaction and grew jealous of Hyun Wook. Back in the commander's office, Kim Kang Seo greeted Officer Cheon with tea as they caught up. Officer Cheon said that they are short staffed. Kim Kang Seo said that the guilds have been recruiting and poaching after they do their best to train them. Kim Kang Seo understood that Officer Cheon is here because of Sergeant Choi Youngjin, but he is currently on leave. However, thanks to this visit, Officer Cheon was able to find a very interesting soldier. Kim Kang Seo was surprised to hear this from Officer Cheon and wondered who he was referring to. Determined to train up his weak body, Hyun Wook continued stamina training in the field late at night while Park Junmo chased after him, asking how to be as strong as him. Overlooking them, Battalion Commander Kim Kang Seo stood in his office and he began to make a call. He ordered the other party to check on what Corporal Lee Hyun Wook used to do before joining the army. He then reached an agreement with the other party on how to handle Hyun Wook. He then expressed regret to Hyun Wook for the forthcoming consequences, attributing them to Hyun Wook's allure that had sparked greed in others. In the bustling streets of Itiwan, a young boy's attention was captivated by a fleeting shadow while waiting for his mother. Intrigued, he chased after the elusive figure into a nearby alley, mistaking it for a playful creature. To his dismay, the shadow revealed itself as a kobold monster, signaling the presence of a gate and the imminent threat posed by the gathering horde of monsters. Meanwhile, back in the camp, Seo Yunha escorted Hyun Wook to the battalion armory, where the battalion commander granted him days off and the privilege of choosing a weapon. Despite this gesture, the platoon leader still does not believe in Hyun Wook yet. Although Hyun Wook was annoyed, he does not believe that his opinion matters anymore. Seo Yunha thought that Hyun Wook was very smug based on his nonchalant demeanor. Based on the sword marks on the goblin, it was clear that Hyun Wook had defeated all the goblins at the gate by himself, which does not make sense to her at all. At this time, Hyun Wook had just selected a seemingly unimpressive weapon, much to Seo Yunha's confusion. Seo Yunha thought he randomly chose one to avoid her questioning and asked him to pick a proper weapon. However, Hyun Wook remained steadfast in his decision. It was called Cloud Blade that can release a wet fog. While the weapon looked trashy and useless now, in the future, Sergeant Choi Yunjun will be known as a sword saint with this one sword. The item's real name is actually Dark Hand of the Cloud Master. It originated from the Dangun mythology by the Cloud Master, one of the three weather gods that descended upon earth together with the rain and wind gods. This blade is also known as the Hidden Blades Amidst the Clouds, or the God of Thunder. Upon unleashing its full potential, its lightning power is able to raid a mid-sized dungeon by itself. With the combination of steel and lightning, Hyun Wook would be undefeatable. Unfortunately, he will be taking over the sword this time. Seo Yunha asked if taking that scrappy sword is too small for his achievements but Hyun Wook said he is satisfied with this as there is no time for him to pick another one anyway. Just then, the alarm in the camp rang, signaling the breakout of the Itiwan gate. 
Hyunwook's calm demeanor was observed by Seo Yunha. It was as though he was expecting it. Soon, the area is already placed under lockdown, guarded by the soldiers of the Blue Flower Guild, who had sent reinforcements to help deal with this gate. The soldiers looked at their expensive equipment with jealousy. One of their equipment would be sufficient to buy a building in Gangnam. One of the soldiers vowed to get transferred to the Blue Flower Guild after his service to live a life of luxury. As Hyunwook's support squad arrived at the scene, Hyunwook briefed his troops that this is a cobalt gate. Even though they are small monsters, they are able to use poison needles and gas which can sometimes result in higher casualties than fighting orcs and trolls. Hyunwook then reprimanded one of the squad mates not to roll up his sleeves but the soldier questioned if they need to be so serious since they are far from the front line and the monsters wouldn't come here anyway. However, Hyunwook reminded him that this is not a drill and they could be in danger and should take it seriously. Hyunwook then reminded them to check their mask for protection against poison gas again. Another group came and mocked Hyunwook's support squad for having a strategy meeting and his squad mates looked demoralized by their comments. Hyunwook reminded him that many kobolds had escaped the red zone, the area where the gate first appeared, and warned him to get his mask ready just in case. However, they did not take his warning seriously and Hyunwook thought that is all he could do for them. Ignoring mockery from others, he turned to his demoralized troops and told them that this is not the first time they heard these words. As they are now in the real-life situation where they could lose their life anytime, they should not lose their spirits. As the kobolds have small bodies, he instructed them to attack motion sensors in the sewers and narrow passageways. With the imminent danger looming, he then gave them 20 minutes to go set up. Hyun Wook then called Park Junmo. The rest of the troops all wondered why Hyun Wook was especially nervous today. As Hyun Wook looked at Junmo sternly, Junmo asked why he asked for him. Suddenly, tragedy struck as Hyun Wook fell victim to a poison needle, leaving him paralyzed and vulnerable. Poisonous gas began to spread out of the sewers' manholes. While some collapsed from the gas, others were able to put on the mask just in time. The area was engulfed in chaos as the kobolds began their attack. Hyun Wook lay on the ground paralyzed, begging for someone to save him. A boss kobold monster began walking towards him with a dagger in hand. It had a necklace made out of human eyeballs, seems like it is somewhat of a collector and is looking to add to his collection. In a moment of heroism, Park Junmo intervened and pushed the boss kobold away, saving Hyun Wook from certain death. The dagger had injured Hyun Wook's right eye but he was still alive. As Park Junmo checked on Hyun Wook and tried to put on his mask for him even as Hyun Wook asked him to run, the boss kobold came to decapitate Junmo in one swift move leaving Hyun Wook filled with anguish and determination. As it turns out, that horrifying scene was but a distant memory in Hyun Wook's previous life. Reflecting on the past and a clueless Junmo's sacrifice, he knew today's main battle would be at the rear and vowed to save him this time. He then gave Park Junmo an order that he will give a signal later and Junmo needs to take the other squad mates and leave the operational zone. Junmo thought this would constitute armed desertion. However, Hyun Wook disagreed and confidently said that this is actually war tactics. As the combat squads ventured into the first red zone, they stumbled upon a warehouse teeming with cobalt monsters. Huddled within a wall of shields and magic barriers, they faced a horde of monsters that began charging towards them. Just as the first wave of monsters were able to reach their barriers and shields, the soldiers unleashed a barrage of bullets and spells at them. Back at the rear guard area, Hyun Wook's support squad diligently planted motion sensors. As Hyun Wook finished placing the sensors and tagged an area with aluminum tape, platoon leader Lee Minhui came over to ask what Hyun Wook was doing. He saluted Lee Minhui and informed him that he is attaching the motion sensors according to the manual and marking the relevant location with aluminum tape. However, Lee Minhui remained unimpressed with his efforts. He said that the Blue Flower Guild is here to assist and Hyun Wook should stop making a fool of himself over a cobalt gate. As the first platoon will start their operation in 20 minutes, as the support squad, they just need to get the detox potion ready. However, Hyun Wook reiterated the support squad's mission as relayed to them by the vice platoon commander, which is to stop the monsters that may escape from the rear from entering the civilian area. As Hyun Wook had shouted out this order out loud, it attracted the attention of the surrounding soldiers who wondered what was going on. As Lee Minhui looked around at the attention that Hyun Wook had attracted, he grew frustrated. He reprimanded Hyun Wook for forgetting his place just because the battalion commander showed him a bit of favor. He then pointed his finger constantly at Hyun Wook and mocked him as the only guy in the barrack who had some real battle experience while Hyun Wook continued to shout out his own name to attract more attention. Lee Minhui was annoyed at Hyun Wook's expression as he had sensed a look of defiance from Hyun Wook. Just then, another soldier came over to check on them. It was Sergeant Choi Sionha, a C-ranked mage who specialized in healing, who came over, inquiring about the situation. 
Surprised by her presence, Li Minhui's demeanor shifted, masking his embarrassment with false guidance for Hyun Wook. This turns out to be Hyun Wook's plan to attract her attention to come here as she is Li Minhui's weakness. All of a sudden, Li Minhui changed his demeanor and claimed to be guiding Hyun Wook on what a real battle is like. Embarrassed, he asked his crush what she was doing here. Choi Seon had then reported that the battalion commander has called for Li Hyun Wook. Hyun Wook was surprised that Kim Kang Seo is looking for him now. Nearby, Seo Yunha stood at the top of the building, overwatching the empty streets with her troops from the vantage point. Surveilling with her binoculars, she saw Choi Seonha speaking to Hyun Wook. She encouraged Hyun Wook not to let Lee Minhui's words get to him and offered to take over his duties to finish setting up the sensors so he could just go ahead to find the battalion commander. With no other excuses, he began to make his way to the battalion commander. He knew there was not much time left and wondered why the battalion commander was calling for him now. One of Seo Yunha's troops asked if it is really okay for the attack squad to just be camping here in the raid when they are under the battalion commander's direct command. However, the AMT paladin merely said that these are the battalion commander's orders and soldiers are meant to just follow the orders given. Meanwhile, as Hyun Wook reached the temporary command post, he was taken aback to find both Kim Kang Seo and warrant officer Cheon Myango present. His surprise grew when Kim Kang Seo revealed his plan to put Hyun Wook to a test and appointed him to take the place of Sergeant Choi Young Jin, who is currently on leave, and serve as the temporary squad leader of the 1st platoon for the 2nd strike mission on the gate. This caught Hyun Wook by surprise as Kim Kang Seo had never paid him any attention in the previous life and he wondered why he was doing this now. He continued to worry as he doesn't have time for this and needs to get his act together now. Hyun Wook explained that he had only done support missions so far and this is not even a drill. He was worried about putting the lives of the first platoon on the line during an actual battle. Kim Kang Seo declared that this is his order. Just then, the Delta team reported over the walkie-talkie that the boss monster had left the Cobalt Nest and asked the second and third Red Zone members to be on alert. Hyun Wook knew that they would soon pounce on the rear guard team and everyone would be annihilated if he didn't get there in time. He knew he had to get out of there, no matter the cost. He then requested to speak and the battalion commander gave permission for him to speak. Soon after, Seo Yunha spotted Hyun Wook running out of the temporary command post, racing towards his support squad. His urgent warnings about the poison gas echoed through the camp as alarms blared, signaling the activation of the motion sensors. Poison gas began emerging out of the manholes and engulfed the whole area. Hyun Wook realized that the battle had already begun much earlier than he remembered, prompting him to spring into action to protect his comrades. Earlier, back at the temporary command post, after receiving permission from the battalion commander, Hyun Wook boldly raised a sensitive issue. He mentioned the rumors he'd heard about the battalion commander's first mission, where he allegedly lost all his platoon members. This statement surprised Officer Cheon and earned Hyun Wook a stern stare from Kim Kang Seo. Hyun Wook continued to explain that he was shocked that the battalion commander is ordering him to join the combat squad for the sake of a test even though he was just a lowly corporal of the so-called shitty support squad. He then questioned if the battalion commander, who Hyun Wook respected very much, was considering the regular soldiers to be expendable. Kim Kang Seo was about to explain the role of the attack squad that is directly under his command in the test but Hyun Wook interrupted him. He said that if it is to follow the battalion commander's orders, Hyun Wook would gladly give his life. Hyun Wook found the situation frustrating as he could not just tell him directly that he can see the future. As such, he told the battalion commander that he voiced concerns over the potential casualties due to his lack of command experience. While he was grateful for the battalion commander's high expectations of him, he would rather disobey his orders if the price of that validation is the lives of his comrades in arms. Despite the gravity of his declaration, the battalion commander listened quietly. Officer Cheon warned Hyun Wook that defiance during wartime is a capital offense, prompting Hyun Wook to weigh his options carefully. Of course, Hyun Wook knew what this meant but he needed to go back soon or everyone in the rear guard would die. After deliberation, the battalion commander agreed to let Hyun Wook continue with the original support mission for today. Before Hyun Wook could celebrate this news, Kim Kang Seo warned him that like a true soldier, he will have to deal with the consequences of disobeying orders later. Back in the present, surrounded by poison gas, Hyun Wook hurriedly donned his mask for protection and retrieved his cloud blade from his inventory bag. He then poured water from his canteen onto the blade to trigger the unique skill, wet fog and the blade began absorbing the water. As he couldn't see anything due to the toxic gas, he worried that he was too late. He prayed that Junmo and the others would heed his earlier order to evacuate. Back at the rear guard, cobalt monsters had emerged to launch their surprise attack on them. A soldier was stabbed by a cobalt's pickaxe and began calling for Junmo's help. Hearing his name, Junmo turned over to provide cover fire for the injured soldier. 
This chased the monster away from the soldier. Junmo then ordered the support squad to get inside the protected military box and take the injured soldier with them. One of the troops began to grab the injured soldier and pull him to safety while others continued to provide cover fire. The young Sergeant Choi Sionha was trembling in fear in the corner of the military box. Junmo attempted to ask her to come to her senses but to no avail. He then realized that she is just a 20-year-old and this is her first real mission after appointment. Junmo hated that he was too weak himself to do anything for the support squad. As the support troops began reporting that they were running out of ammo and the kobolds continued to attack the magic barrier, Junmo wondered what he could do in this situation. He then asked himself, what would Lee Hyun Wook do in this situation? Summoning his courage, Junmo retrieved his hammer from his inventory bag. As the troops reported finishing up their ammo, Park Junmo called out to the support squad while staring at his small hammer. He informed them that the kobolds are obsessed with shiny things and he will attack them to lure them away. He then asked them to use this chance to get out of this place with the vice platoon leader, Sergeant Choi Sionha and the injured troops. They were all surprised by his statements. He declared that this is his order as the support squad's vice platoon leader as he raised up his hammer with sparks running through it. He echoed Lee Hyun Wook's earlier comments that the Blue Flower Guild is just outside the red ground. He asked them to clench their teeth and run for their lives once he gave the signal. His sparkling hammer had begun to attract the attention of some of the kobold monsters. Park Junmo knew that his pathetic electric skills would not be able to save anyone but was glad that he was still able to save people. He then raised his hammer up while running in one direction. The sparks attracted the attention of all the kobold monsters and they began chasing after him. He then asked the support squad to use this chance and run away. Everyone was surprised by his actions and the kobolds were chasing behind him. Park Junmo said that he knew this is what Hyun Wook would use his pathetic power like this as well. He was confident that Hyun Wook would even use him as bait. Just as the kobold monsters were about to reach Park Junmo, a swinging bayonet flew across them to stop them from reaching Park Junmo. Park Junmo then bumped into a person in front of him and fell to the ground. Hyun Wook called Park Junmo a rascal as he had heard everything he just said. Hyun Wook then released the wet fog from his cloud blade that neutralized the toxic gas in the surrounding area as it spread it. Park Junmo was surprised to see him. As Hyun Wook called Park Junmo, Junmo apologized as he got carried away and was not trying to imitate him. However, Hyun Wook merely thanked him for being alive and said that he did a very good job. Hearing this, Park Junmo began to tear up. Staring at the surrounding monsters, Hyun Wook said that he is proud of him. Thanks to his noble courage, Hyun Wook would be able to enjoy the feast in front of him. Hyun Wook happily declared that he will devour the feast with all he got after Park Junmo had set up such a great meal for him. As Hyun Wook unleashed his attack, his bayonet sliced through the kobold monsters with precision, preventing them from getting close. As he looked at all the mana steel on the ground, he thought that they looked delicious. However, Park Junmo thought he was referring to the kobolds. Hyun Wook felt restricted as he is unable to eat them in front of Park Junmo. He scanned the horde of monsters, searching for the boss kobold. Suddenly, the mark on their foreheads lit up, as if they just received an order and they looked back at the direction they came from. They swiftly turned and began to retreat, prompting Hyun Wook to realize that something was amiss. Urging Junmo to follow, he raced back towards their squad mates, fearing they were in danger. As the gas made it impossible to see from above, the attack squad were unable to assist from a distance. Seo Yunha ordered the attack squad to deal with any kobold that escaped the gas zone to prevent them from reaching the civilians as she put on her mask. Her troop member asked if she was going somewhere. Yunha noticed that Lee Hyun Wook definitely acted like he knew this was happening and said she needed to go verify something before leaping into the toxic gas filled area. Back with the rear guard, Choi Sionha remained paralyzed from fear. The injured soldier was bleeding out and needed to be healed, and fellow soldiers begged her to snap out of it. Further, the military box was being torn apart. As it turned out, the boss kobold had been attacking the box while the other monsters were chasing Junmo. They were barely able to hold the box together. However, the boss kobold's spell proved to be too strong and the box was soon torn apart. A large group of kobolds also began rushing towards them and are closing in on them. The remaining troops began to panic and thought they might really be done for this time. The boss suddenly noticed something strange. Behind its group of kobold monsters, there were two strange figures. It turned out to be Hyun Wook, who demanded them not to mess with his squad as he summoned his bayonet from above towards the boss kobold. The boss managed to block the initial attack but the bayonet changed direction and started chasing after it but it was able to move swiftly enough to dodge the bayonet. As the bayonet was about to hit its back, it swiftly jumped to the side. However, the bayonet was able to hit the poison gas canister that it was carrying on its back. 
Enraged, it continued to send signals and orders to the surrounding kobolds as the mark began to lit up again. The monsters then switched directions and jumped to both sides of Hyun Wook. They then turned to Hyun Wook and Park Junmo and took out their poison needle dart. Soon, many poison needles began flying towards them and Hyun Wook stopped to brace for the attack. Using his blade, he sweeps all needles away to protect both himself and Junmo. Park Junmo also tried to shield Hun Wook from the needles. Hyun Wook asked Junmo to get down as he began to use his metal control to divert the needles. As the speed of the needles were too fast for his control, he lost control of his greatsword bayonet that was chasing the boss kobold and it fell to the ground. Hyun Wook tried shooting at the surrounding kobold but knew that it won't buy him any time as the boss kobold is literally controlling them himself. He knew that it was too dangerous to be fighting with Junmo by his side and immediately asked him to retreat to the box. They then began running towards the box while the kobolds continued to shoot the needles at them. As Hyun Wook used his metal control to stop another wave of needles, Junmo and himself had managed to reach the safety of the military box, temporarily protected by the box's magic barrier. Hyun Wook let out a sigh of relief that they finally made it but was surprised at the sight in front of him. The support squad were grateful to see him while Park Junmo reported to him that Private An Minte had lost consciousness. Hyun Wook was confused about the situation as the healer was right in front of them. Looking at the trembling healer, Sergeant Choi Siaha, Hyun Wook realized that she was having a full panic attack. He knew that with their only healer in this state, they would soon be annihilated. He then went towards her and gave her a slap across her face. He then looked sternly at her and asked her to come back to her senses or everyone here would die. He reminded her that they are in the middle of battle right now. As Hyun Wook gave her a tight slap across her face, he asked her whether she is going to live with regret for the rest of her life. Do you even know how horrifying a life full of regret is? he demanded. It prompted her to snap out of her panic and attend to the injured private on. As Hyun Wook asked about his status, Sergeant Choi explained that he had lost a lot of blood because she was late but she will do her utmost to save him. Thanking her for her efforts, Hyun Wook asked to borrow all their great swords, vowing for payback against the kobolds. Somewhere on the highway, the owner in a luxury car heard of the unfolding events at Idiwan Station over the phone. She had a giant spider on her shoulder and had decided to pay that place a visit. She then instructed her driver to head to Idiwan. Back at the scene, Hyun Wook navigated the area, the cloud blade continuing to neutralize the toxic gas as he reached the spot marked by the aluminum tape. All of the kobolds, including the boss monster, were hiding out of sight, waiting for a good opportunity to strike. Hyun Wook had set up the boxes and sensors at the desired locations and the aluminum tape marked the center mark of the area. The only margin of error would be the section area A that was commanded by the vice platoon leader Choi Siona. Hyun Wook's target is the boss who was pulling the strings from behind the scenes. He then used his metal detection skill to sense all the metal in the surrounding. Any metal that he doesn't recognize out of area A has to be a kobold. He then sent the flying greatswords towards those locations and they accurately struck the kobolds in hiding. As one of the blades flew towards the kobold boss, it was stopped by its own spell. Hyun Wook had sensed the resistance from the blade and knew he had found the boss kobold. He then sent all of the blades toward the boss. To his surprise, the boss kobold burst out in anger as the blades on its head brightened up and it had managed to stop all five greatswords in motion. The boss kobold was proud to have stopped Hyun Wook's attacks but it annoyed Hyun Wook. He tried to summon back his blades but they were bound by the boss kobold's magic forces. The surrounding kobolds then received orders and began to shoot out more poison needles at Hyun Wook. With no great swords nearby, he could only block the needles by raising up his hands. As all the needles struck Hyun Wook's arms, all the great swords dropped into the ground. The boss kobold then ordered the rest of the kobolds to continue their attacks on Hyun Wook and charged towards it. As it turns out, Hyun Wook was uninjured from the needle attacks. This was all credit to his body strengthening transformation as he had strengthened his arms before impact to block off all the needles. Hyun Wook then summoned back the nearby great swords to his side. As the horde or kobolds had completely surrounded him, Hyun Wook began to spin the great swords at high speed around himself, causing a giant tornado that swept across the whole area and slashing down all the kobolds that were caught up. As the dust settled, all the surrounding kobolds were wiped out, surprising the boss kobold. He then called out to the boss ready to settle their score once and for all. After the dust settled, Hyun Wook wasted no time in challenging the boss Dark Mage Kobold to finish the battle once and for all. Frustrated, the boss Kobold released another wave of poison gas into the air, making it difficult for Hyun Wook to see. However, he remained undeterred, declaring the futility of the boss's final struggles as it is the only monster left. As he used his metal detection skill again, he honed in on its location. 
He knew that recklessly throwing daggers at him is pointless as it will catch all of them again. He knew he had to attack carefully. After a while, Hyun Wook found it strange that it was not moving from its location at all. Suddenly, dark magical tendrils began to approach Hyun Wook from the ground at a fast speed. It was the boss Kobold's skill. Hyun Wook did not have time to react and it caught his leg and began dragging him towards the boss. The boss then dragged Hyun Wook and threw him high up in the air before dropping him, hoping to severely hurt him from the fall damage. The boss Kobold began laughing, thinking that its plan was successful and it had defeated Hyun Wook. However, Hyun Wook called out to it in anger. He had managed to survive by strengthening his legs. He was enraged by the memories of the damage dealt to him in his previous life by the Kobolds and the PTSD that the boss gave him previously. The boss then braced itself for another attack. It suddenly moved at a high speed and charged towards Hyun Wook. It swiftly reached behind Hyun Wook and launched its dagger at him. Hyun Wook managed to dodge the attack but was furious as he had always hated being backstabbed. When he swung his blade at the boss, it managed to block it but Hyun Wook quickly followed up by strengthening his leg and stomped his feet at the boss face, sending it flying. Hyun said he had imagined countless times taking his revenge against backstabbers like the boss since the day he regressed. He said it should be considered an honor for being the first he took down. As the mask was crushed in pieces, the boss could no longer use its magic. Hyun Wook then sent the great swords flying towards the boss, slashing it across its body. The boss collapsed to the ground with its toxic gas canister destroyed. As Hyun Wook grabbed the boss by its face and lifted it up in the air, he complained about the years he spent like a cripple because of it. The slashes were from the daggers by his squad members whom it annihilated in Hyun Wook's previous life. Recalling the kind Junmo who saved his life previously, Hyun Wook's next attack is payback for Park Junmo who died trying to save him. He then stabbed the cloud blade into the boss's stomach and it began to absorb the blood of an elite monster and was being filled with an unknown energy. Hyun Wook asked it not to die on him yet as there was one more step to go as he summoned the boss dagger towards its face. The last attack is payback for the scar it left on his face. He then sent the dagger flying across the boss's face, ending its life. As the cloud blade finished absorbing the unknown energy, the system notified Hyun Wook that the cloud blade's latent power will be unlocked and it is completely filled with the unknown energy. It is currently at 11% after killing the cobalt boss. Hyun Wook was relieved that he finally reversed the first event of his past that had been haunting him. Just then, a medallion fell from the boss Kobold's body, catching Hyun Wook's attention. It was the devil's medallion known as Inferno, which contains the power of the devilish race, demons. He wondered why this medallion is here right now. In his past life, it belonged to humanity's greatest villain, the one who controlled the undead army that was hell for the humans who survived, the necromancer. As there was virtually no intel about him, Hyun Wook only knew about the specific growth trait that they have in common. After regressing, he had hidden the fact that he can advance from F rank because of him. In his past life, he had engaged in an intense battle with him in his Blue Lava Golem workshop and only managed to obtain a replica of Inferno. As such, Hyun Wook was confused why the original medallion is here right now. He wondered about the things that he doesn't know about yet. As the poison gas was clearing up, Hyun Wook had not much time left to gather his loot and intended to just eat the medallion first. However, he heard his name being called. It was the AMT paladin, Seo Yunha, who was standing behind him. She began to question and asked who he was. Hyun Wook tried to remain calm but was worried about how much she saw of the battle. Just then, a lady began walking towards them and clapped. She was impressed with the battle that she just saw earlier. She then greeted Hyun Wook and introduced herself. She was Catherine Yu, the head of the Soul Attack Unit of the Blue Flower Guild. As Seo Yunha stood behind Hyun Wook and questioned him, he swiftly hid the devil's medallion as he turned around, surprised by her sudden appearance. He wondered how much of the battle she had witnessed. Suddenly, Catherine's appearance broke the tension. She proclaimed that the fight was impressive, though she had only observed from afar, and acknowledged Seo Yunha as the third daughter of the captain of the paladins. Seo Yunha corrected her saying that she was a captain of the 1st Battalion Attack Squad of the 3rd AMT Brigade. She also warned her that she is currently in the military operations area where civilians are not allowed. Catherine ignored her warnings and approached Hyun Wook to introduce herself, offering her name card. Surprised by his lack of reactions, she thought that he did not know her as she did not know that he recognized her as one of his greatest villains from his past life. In a flashback, Hyun Wook remembered a battle between Catherine and Seo Yunha, where the latter sacrificed her life to save him from Catherine. Realizing Catherine's identity as the murderer of Seo Yunha, Hyun Wook was unsettled by her presence. Back to the present, 
Catherine reminded Hyun Wook that there was a huge opportunity in front of him right now while Yunha warned her that she needed to leave this military operation area right away. Annoyed by CEO Yunha's persistence, Catherine asserted her rank as the head of the Seoul Attack Squad of the Blue Flower Guild, leading to a tense standoff between the two. Just then, the battalion commander arrived. After surveilling the surroundings, he turned to look at Hyun Wook, who realized that there was no way out for him anymore. He then greeted Catherine but cautioned her that while they were grateful for the Blue Flower Guild's reinforcements, it was still unacceptable for her to enter the military operation area and asked her to leave. Catherine sighed at the military's inflexibility. She left a kiss mark on the name card before passing it to Hyun Wook, reminding him to call her. The battalion commander then called Hyun Wook and gave him the order to take over as the squad commander of this cobalt operation, with orders to prioritize rescuing survivors. Hyun Wook was ordered to prioritize the rescue of the survivors and was entrusted with the delegation of the squad members. He instructed Hyun Wook to report to him directly for debriefing once the situation was resolved. As they departed, Seo Yunha's intense stare made Hyun Wook uneasy, but he felt relieved that they had survived the crisis. A week later, Hyun Wook had finally absorbed the Devil's Medallion, increasing his controllable metal weight by 499 grams. Hiding in the toilet, Hyun Wook began to form a breath room, a special skill from the medallion, which caused his body to feel excruciating pain. Due to his weak body, the pain was worse than the previous time he went through this. Park Junmo then found him hiding in the toilet and thought he was looking at something nice by himself and thought he was doing something sketchy in the toilet. With the breath room still forming, Hyun Wook was in great pain and tried to clarify that it was not what it looked like. As Hyun Wook's orifices began to glow, it shocked Junmo as Hyun Wook continued to explain that it was not what he was thinking of. The cobalt gate that everyone had underestimated caused a lot of casualties. Fortunately, Sergeant Choi Sionha managed to stabilize Private on Mindy's condition and he was safely transported to the military hospital. After this incident, he gave up on the thought of protecting everything by himself and started training the support squad so that they are able to at least defend themselves. However, this caused two problems for Hyun Wook. Firstly, Sergeant Choi Sionha started bothering Hyun Wook more often and this made the platoon leader Lee Min Hee grow more jealous. Secondly, the battalion commander had requested Hyun Wook to quit working as a NCO, a non-commissioned officer, and join them as a commissioned officer. He was convinced by Hyun Wook's abilities after the Itiwan incident. He shared his grand vision of an ideal military culture where ranks didn't matter. Although reluctant, Hyun Wook informed him that he will think about it during his vacations. Three weeks later, his vacation finally came. Hiding in the toilet of the Seoul station, Hyun Wook finally gained the new skill, Breath Room. It had a few effects. The first was the furnace, which had the effect of increasing his metal consumption up to 250%. The second was the fire breath, which allowed Hyun Wook to breath out some of the metal he stored within himself and fire it off like a breath. Finally, Hyun Wook could stop the rumors of him doing weird things in the toilet. However, Hyun Wook knew that he was still far too weak to handle the next gate. In his past life, the battalion commander was forced to abandon the Seoul Station gate and give up on the citizens still trapped inside the Seoul Station. He realized his weakness and resolved to prepare for the next gate to change the future. Choi Siona was also on vacation as she bumped into Hyun Wook at the Seoul Station. Hyun Wook was surprised to meet her here. As the two of them saw each other at the station, Choi Sionha instinctively asked for a lighter from Hyun Wook, subconsciously showing her real personality for a moment. In the train where they sat together, there was an awkward silence between them. Sionha attempted to break the silence by initiating a conversation, asking if this was his first vacation in a while to visit his parents. However, Hyun Wook replied that both his parents passed away a long time ago. This caused the awkward silence to return as Sionha struggled to find the right words. Hyun Wook then attempted to ease the tension by sharing his experience of finding solace among friends. Despite feeling lonely in his youth, he found support in these comrades, akin to family. They were their comrades in arms from his past life as the Great Steel Emperor. Back in his hometown Yangdungpa, he has four days and three nights of vacations to fully prepare himself for the future. The first step is to obtain a lot of money. The owner of Blue Tree should already be a multi-trillionaire by now and he was none other than Gordon Pracy. His black money was used to buy out high-ranking people, players and items. Gradually, he took the reins over everything. Although they lost to the villains due to many reasons, money was the core. While it was impossible to get as much money as Gordon Pracy at this point, Hyun Wook should still be able to get enough not to get swept in by his money game. Hyun Wook planned to invest wisely based on his knowledge of future events. All he needed was someone loyal that he could entrust that to so that they won't betray him no matter what. As he arrived at his destination, 
the Hope Guild, he heard an argument before entering the place. It was a tall man, Wunchel, arguing with another man as he was unhappy with the kind of work that the other man found for him. When they saw Hyun Wook arrive, Wunchul let go of the other man and came over to greet Hyun Wook. Recalling his past memories, he told the Wunchul that they are not on good enough terms to be greeting each other that nicely. He then walked past Wunchul to greet the other man, enraging Wunchul. Hyun Wook then refreshed Wunchul memories. In the past, when showing his not so impressive steel controlling abilities, Wunchul was furious that Hyun Wook's awakened skills were so weak and warned him not to brag about being awakened like himself and bullied him. Annoyed by the walk down memory lane, Wunchul began calling Hyun Wook a demeaning nickname, a little tin pilot and threatened to beat him up like he used to. He was a C-ranked player with the fighter trait and was currently the Hope Guild's signature player. The other man tried to stop Wunchul but Hyun Wook surprised them by accepting Wunchul's challenge. Enraged, he launched a punch at Hyun Wook and suddenly stopped in his tracks. It was because Hyun Wook had surrounded him with weapons controlled by his metal control skill. Hyun Wook assured him that he could cripple him and end his career as a close-range fighter. Another man entered the place and broke the tension, hurrying Wunchul to leave now so that they could reach the event in time for their job. Hyun Wook immediately dropped all the swords and changed his demeanor. He acted apologetic and begged for Wunchul's forgiveness. As he hugged Wunchul, he whispered to Wunchul that he knew he was kicked out of the White Tiger Guild because he peed his pants and ran away during their first mission because he was afraid. He reminded him that he also wouldn't want to fight a low F ranked in front of everyone. He was helping him to save face and warned him to get lost. After he left, Hyun Wook spoke with the other man. He had told him a list of stocks that would skyrocket. Hearing this, he was shocked as if his calculations were right, that money would be life-changing. At the event later, Wunchul was still pissed at the encounter with Hyun Wook and burst out in anger. The supervisor then came over to check on why they were making a ruckus. As he came over to Wunchul and reprimanded him for following his instructions, he was met with a punch from Wunchul. He continued landing multiple punches at the supervisor until the asphalt road broke into pieces, venting all his frustration at the supervisor. He then ordered his guys to investigate and search for Lee Hyun Wook, indicating trouble ahead for Hyun Wook. The man that Hyun Wook was speaking to was Park Kyosu, the Hope Guild leader. He was of the analyst class who would go on to lead the rediscovery of Rank F. He was also Hyun Wook's benefactor who found a way to boost his abilities. Upon hearing the future stock news from Hyun Wook, Park Ki also raised his doubts, a reasonable reaction when someone appeared out of nowhere with a way that could make life-changing money. Hyun Wook then provided him with the three name cards from the Blue Flower Guild, Black Tiger Squad and AMT to prove his trustworthiness. This made Park Ki also to suspect that they had provided Hyun Wook with this information to scout him. When asked if he trusted Hyun Wook, Park Ki also gave him a definite yes. Other than the source of information being his past life, all the information shared was all true. Hyun Wook then showed him the conversation between him and the battalion commander where he was offered the position of the officer to prove that he was reliable. Hun Wook then passed him all his savings as he wanted to entrust him with his investment as well. This made Park Ki also realize that Hyun Wook had genuine faith in him. In his past life, when Hyun Wook had lost all hope in life, he was the only one who comforted him and gave him hope that their talents would be recognized in the future. This was Hyun Wook's way of repaying his friend for the warmth he received when he was nothing. In the near future, humanity would encounter otherworldly beings that can communicate. They would gain technology through their interactions, which would be a turning point in the gate war. Their skills would be vital in stopping the gates and waves that are to come. Hyun Wook will be looking for an expert who can communicate with the otherworldly beings such as the dwarves to gain their technology and knowledge. Hyun Wook then headed to Yang Dung Po's blacksmith alley for the second step of his preparation for the future. With the seven dwarven artisans, he would create his first master grade item. Before that, he will need to find the future master blacksmiths before the villains realize their existence. At this time, Hyun Wook had not noticed the stranger that was stalking him. Entering a blacksmith store, he was met with a cold greeting from the blacksmith who was busy working on a weapon. He was artisan Kong Jiangdu who was fired from the blacksmith's guild for his eccentricities. Hyun Wook then realized that the weapon that he was working on was a javelin made of Orihalken and it would one day be the Dragon Slayer spear that was driven into the heart of the Dragon Terex. He could understand why the foundation for the first Master Grade item was laid in this ramshackle workshop. A girl then entered the room while being rude to Hyun Wook. It was none other than his future comrade in arms, future Master Blacksmith Kong Baekseel. After the artisan Kong Jiangdu passed away four years later, she would inherit all his skills and become a Master Smith, surpassing even her master. Just as she analyzed the items on Hyun Wook's body and realized that they are all expensive, her attitude changed. 
Her blind craze for money suits a dwarf perfectly. Hyun Wook then purchased a huge amount of poisonous magical metals and mistral tungsten alloy beads, which made her very happy although her master was surprised that he would buy these items despite not being a mage. Hyun Wook did not clarify his reasons for buying and promised to come back to trade more often in the future. After saying goodbye, Hyun Wook knew that they would see each other again but was apologetic that he had to call her back to battle. However, this time, he promised to protect her no matter what. Back at the motel, the stranger had also followed him and waited outside. In the motel room, Hyun Wook had begun his preparations. Before the end of his vacation, he needed to significantly increase his poison resistance and metal weight that he can manipulate. Upon consuming the metal enchanted with poison, his poison tolerance will increase by a small amount. He would also use his new skill, Breath Room, to speed up the absorption. After increasing the internal furnace's efficiency to the highest additional 250%, he experienced severe pain which triggered multiple warning signs from the system. He knew that he had to endure all this pain as he did not have long before the Soul Station Gate. After two days, the stalker had brought Wunchul to this location and reported that Hyun Wook had been locked in the room for two days without coming out. After two days of preparation, Hyun Wook had already increased his poison resistance to tier 2 and increased his controllable metal weight to 17,000 grams, which also increased his metal detection ability. Although the poison resistance skill was not as high as Hyun Wook had hoped, he was satisfied with the controllable weight that was enough to carry 60 daggers. He also had a breakthrough in ability and gained a trait skill, Metal Smash, a rank D skill which allowed him to destroy metal. This would allow him to disarm almost any piece of equipment just by crushing them all. He then sensed the metal on his intruder that was about to break into his room. It was none other than Wunchul, who was surprised that he wasn't shocked at all. Hyun Wook tried to convince him to just go back because as a soldier, he had a lot of restrictions governing his actions. Disregarding his plea, Wunchul charged at him, firing a punch at him. However, Hyun Wook strengthened his arm and stopped his punch easily, surprising Wunchul. Hyun Wook proposed taking it outside as fighting here would get civilians all caught up. However, Wunchul did not care about all these and continued his attacks at Hyun Wook. He did not believe that Hyun Wook had the ability to fight him and was merely bluffing. Two days ago, it would have been a bluff but he had grown a lot stronger after his preparations. He easily dodged Wunchul's kick and countered with a punch to his stomach. As Wunchul collapsed to the ground, Hyun Wook asked why he was going so far. Annoyed, he activated his skill on his leg and prepared for another attack. Hyun Wook continued to ask him to stop before getting civilians hurt but Wunchul ignored him once again. To minimize the shock to the building, Hyun Wook began running to the window. Just as Wunchul's attack was about to hit, Hyun Wook leaped into the air, allowing himself to be hit out of the building. Wunchul, blinded by rage, charged out of the building to continue his attacks on Hyun Wook. As Hyun Wook was sent flying out of the building, Wunchul swiftly followed out to continue his attack. By using his strengthening body transformation to turn his legs into metal and then using metal control on his own legs, he was able to create a skill chain to float in the air and dodge Wunchul's attacks. While he was still not able to fly as freely as in his previous life, this skill chain allowed Hyun Wook to control his body well enough. As Hyun Wook and Wunchul clashed outside the building, their altercation drew the attention of numerous civilians, complicating the situation. Wunchul was annoyed that Hyun Wook had just been dodging all his attacks and challenged him to fight him properly. Hyun Wook ignored his taunts and continued to dodge all his kicks. The civilians had already reported this incident to the police by now. Given that many civilians were watching, Hyun Wook couldn't counterattack him as fiercely. Furthermore, if people got dragged into the fight, his plans for the Seoul Station Gate could also be ruined. Wunchul figured that Hyun Wook was unwilling to fight due to the surrounding spectators and threatened to get rid of them. As he prepared his attacks on the building, Hyun Wook stood between them to stop Wunchul, reminding him that there were innocent civilians in there. Wunchul's disregard for civilian safety highlighted his selfishness and obsession with revenge against Hyun Wook. He then charged towards Hyun Wook. Enraged, Hyun Wook decided to put an end to his life as a player. He then activated his new metal crush skill at Wunchul's Shin Armor Guard. In an instant, the armor guard was crushed by his skill together with his leg, incapacitating Wunchul. He cowered in fear when Hyun Wook walked towards him. Hyun Wook interrogated Wunchul about why he was going this far but he merely said that it was because Hyun Wook annoyed him. Hyun Wook believed that there would be a reason for his relentless attacks on him. He believed that rascals drunk on superiority complexes like him do not deserve to be players as they would always turn out to be villains. Enraged, he controlled a sharp piece of metal next to Wunchul and threatened Wunchul not to appear in front of him again. Hyun Wook knew that he couldn't give up on the chance to save his comrades and take revenge on villains just for someone like him. 
At this time, all the police cars have arrived. At the station, Hyun Wook had testified at the awakened task force that he simply tried to stop Lee Wunchul and it was consistent with the eyewitnesses' statements. The ATF officer thought Hyun Wook was lucky to get out of a fight against a vicious player like Wunchul without a scratch all thanks to a malfunction shin armor. He was then free to go as his low rank had helped him avoid any suspicion. Just then, the reports on Lee Wunchul's shin armor were out and it was clear that it did not have any durability issues. They were surprised as this meant that AF rank had crushed AC rank armor and took him down without a scratch. Hyun Wook had already begun rushing to the Seoul station at a high speed. In his previous life, he had only seen on the news that the Seoul station gate began at 3.24 pm and had a high death toll and the second and third waves were incredibly difficult. That incident caused the public to criticize the current gate response system. As Hyun Wook had no first-hand experience with this gate opening, he had limited information and was concerned with the variables. With eight more minutes until the gate opened, he wondered if he would be able to handle it with his current progress. He had considered going on a rampage to evacuate the general population, but he couldn't do it today as there was a villain hiding here. If he did not manage to catch him today and he went into hiding, Hyun Wook could never find the turning point that changes the future. With two more minutes to go, Hyun Wook heard a familiar voice. It was the vice platoon leader, Choi seon -ha. She asked Hyun Wook about the incident last night where he was sent to the police station. When asked about how she knew where to find him, Choi seon -ha said that Hyun Wook had told her before that he had plans on his last day in Seoul Station. As Choi seon -ha wasn't supposed to be here in his previous life, he wondered if it was because he changed the past. With only one minute left, Hyun Wook could only stick to his current plan despite Choi seon -ha continuing to question him about the incident last night. As he dropped his bag and let all the alloy beads spread across the ground, it caught everyone by surprise. Hyun Wook then told Choi seon -ha to prepare herself and run to where the gas masks were when he gave the signal. This instruction confused Choi seon -ha who did not know what was about to happen. Suddenly, a gate materialized above the top of the Seoul Station. A giant monster emerged from the gate and crashed into Seoul Station. Hyun Wook then gave Choi seon -ha the signal to run. When the gate portal began to form above Seoul Station, a mother and daughter's farewell was interrupted when the area was warped around by an unknown dome. A system notification appeared above the dome, indicating that this was an unlucky event with a level 15 imposed on the area. People won't be allowed to leave once they enter the area. The objective of the event was to survive for six hours or defeat the boss monster. As Hyun Wook gave the signal to run, the spider monster had landed in the Seoul station and panic spread it across the station with everyone running for their lives. Hyun Wook instructed Choi seon -ha to get to safety and go grab the gas mask from the passenger aid station. Due to her pride as a soldier, she proclaimed that she would not just run and hide and would help the civilians evacuate and heal the wounded. As the vice platoon leader, she ordered Hyun Wook to stay alive at all costs. In the military office, Kim kang -siak was reporting to the brigadier general about his request to commission Hyun Wook as an officer. The battalion commander challenged the conventional assessment of talent solely based on rank that was assessed at the player training center where all newly awakened players enter. He believed that the rank was merely a metric based on their trait and aptitude for combat effectiveness. As players level up, they should also adjust the ranks accordingly or undervalued skills will be buried and lost. The brigadier general, Choi jung Chil, was annoyed after being given a lecture by the battalion commander. He was concerned as many veterans had been leaving to join the guilds. If a lowly ranked soldier were to become an officer, no one would want to apply to the AMT and that would be the end of AMT. He did not believe that a lowly ranked player could have any future in this world. Just then, a call arrived to inform them of the arrival of the Seoul Station Gate. They were also surprised when they heard it was an unlucky event. An unlucky event usually came with debuffs and restrictions that would make clearing the gate more difficult. As the station guard attempted to burn the giant spider monster that they had never seen before, their fire spells were unable to keep them back and the mage almost died until he was saved by someone. It was John Monhu, the team leader of the Seoul Station Guard. As the fire spells were not working, he ordered the guards to switch to Frost Rune and bind its legs. As the frost spells were fired at the spider to immobilize it, John Monhu intended to injure its eyes while its legs were still bound. Just when he leaped at the spider's head, the spider's forelegs broke loose and its mouth opened at the approaching John Monhu and he could only hold his shield up to protect himself. In the nick of time, several metal alloy beads arrived to push him out of the spider's bite. It was Hyun Wook who had arrived. With no time for hesitation, Hyun Wook activated his metal smash on the spider's body. After consuming 24% of his mana, the spider's outer body broke under pressure. This shocked everyone while Hyun Wook gained the confidence that he will be able to stop this gate and get all the rewards for clearing the gate for himself. 
As the spider continued to charge at Hyun Wook, he fired more alloy beads at the spider. Upon landing on the spider's internal body, he activated metal spin, twisting and turning the spider's flash. Soon, the spider collapsed after its insides were turned into a blender by Hyun Wook. John Manhu was shocked that Hyun Wook had single-handedly finished off the monster that the whole guard team couldn't lay a finger on. He began to think that Hyun Wook could be a S ranker that they had only heard stories of. Nearby, the villain was annoyed at Hyun Wook's interference, ruining his quests. As John Manhu introduced himself to Hyun Wook and asked if he was A.S. Ranker, Hyun Wook reminded him not to let his guard down as the first wave was not over yet. Just then, two more spiders appeared out of the gate. Hyun Wook was now confident that he could handle this gate as he fired his metal beads at the monsters. As the first spider fell, Hyun Wook warned them not to lower their guard so quickly as the first wave was not over yet. With two more spiders falling out of the gate, Hyun Wook braced himself for the battle, now more confident than ever. Outside the dome, the battalion had arrived and set up camp. The Blue Flower Guild were also stationed outside the Soul Station. One of the mages asked why can't they just gather all the mages and use battering magic to smash the dome. The other player explained that the dome was not magic but a rule created by the system. As such, they couldn't shatter it unless they override the system. They could only wait for the time to pass now. At this time, both Catherine Yu of the Blue Flower Guild and Kim Kangsiak had arrived. When asked if the Blue Flower Guild had any players that are under level 15, Catherine said that they do not have such low-level players. She also said that the military sending a rescue team of low levels was equivalent to sending them to their death. However, the battalion commander said that they needed to save the over 800 civilians trapped inside. Further, there was a trump card inside. In the station, Hyun Wook continued fighting the spider monsters with his metal smash attacks. When the spider launched its claws at Hyun Wook, he was able to get out of the way using the strengthening body transformation and metal control skill chain. He then ordered the guards to do as they did before and freeze the spiders. Using the frost runes, the guards fired freeze spells and froze one of the spiders in place. However, the second spider crawled on the wall and launched an attack at one of the mages. Hyun Wook stopped the attack by firing his metal beads at it. He then added the metal spin on the beads, breaking through the spider's defense and it collapsed to the ground. Just then, the frozen spider broke out of the ice. Hyun Wook and declared to send it to its death as well as he used the metal smash attacks on it. With 39% mana remaining, the last spider finally collapsed as well. Nearby, a mysterious figure was enraged by Hyun Wook's sudden appearance. He wondered why a player of his caliber would appear here and screw up his plans, causing him to fail his first mission. As it turns out, he had failed the first of his main quest as a villain candidate issued by the mysterious system. The stakes are high for him as the penalties for failing this quest was death. As the first wave was finally over, Hyun Wook asked the guards to gather. John Manhu thanked Hyun Wook for his assistance and asked for his name. However, after looking around the guards, he was surprised that he did not see that villain. He had definitely heard that he was a guard during the Seoul Station Gate event. Just then, Choi Seonha appeared and Hyun Wook asked if the civilians had been evacuated safely. John Manhu was surprised to hear that Hyun Wook was in the military as top players were exempted from the military service as the country couldn't control them. Choi Seonha informed that she had separated the civilians and hid them in rooms with narrow passageways since the spider monsters are huge. As such, no one was badly injured. While Choi Seonha asked about how Hyun Wook stopped the first gate, John Manhu was also asking about his rank. With not much time left to explain all these to them. He revealed key information that he believed that this could be a double gate, shocking the rest. He needed to find the villain before the second wave but was worried that he would go into hiding and would have the chance to create chaos during the second wave. Hyun Wook figured that they needed to move ahead of him. Outside, Kim kang -seok briefed the rescue squad and appointed Lee Min-hee as the field commanding officer. Everyone was surprised that as a C-ranked player, he was not level 15 yet. Kim kang -seok then said that he was sending the lowly-level soldiers in with a heavy heart but the lives of the civilians depended on them. He then spoke to Lee Min-hee and told him that when he encountered Lee Hyun-wook inside, he should incorporate his inputs into the operations. This request surprised him. In the double gate at the other side of the station, the villain found himself in an area full of skeletons and wondered what was going on. It appeared that the monsters here had all been defeated before his arrival. He then scanned his quest list. Although he had failed the first quest when the spiders were killed by Hyun Wook, he still had two more sub-quests. The first was to slaughter at least 500 civilians and the second was to deliver the item from the Elite Seeker 11 at Gate 2 to the Villain Alliance. He aimed to complete these quests to be promoted to a regular villain.
he believed that he had received a life-changing quest and had to stay calm. Just then, he spotted metal beads flying towards him and quickly summoned tree vines to block the attack. He questioned why Hyun Wook was attacking him as he was just a railway guard. Hyun Wook then exposed his plan to hide among the civilians during the first wave and let the guards get massacred. If there were other players among the civilians, he would impersonate a guard to lower their suspicions before slaughtering them. As Hyun Wook called out his name, Yang Juzia, he was caught by surprise and wondered how he knew him. He was a B-ranked player with the Cannibal Tree ability. In the future, he would rise up to a rank and become the villain known as the Black Tentacles. When asked how Hyun Wook knew him, he merely called him a villain. Young Juziap, surprised, reminded Hyun Wook not to casually call out the word villain. As he fired his vines at Hyun Wook, he had guessed that Hyun Wook was an A-rank player based on his ability to manipulate steel. However, he was confident that Hyun Wook's skills are ineffective against him due to incompatibility. Hyun Wook, already knew his ability, had a trump card that would be effective against him. He then concentrated a fire breath in his mouth as he prepared to fire it at him. In the past, Yan Juziap causes havoc with his cannibal tree skills. Using the civilians as hostages, he forced the Great Steel Emperor out of hiding by threatening to devour them all. Now, Juziap launched his tree vines at Hyun Wook, believing that Hyun Wook's skills would be ineffective against him due to incompatibility. Prepared for this fight, Hyun Wook swiftly dodged the vines using his skill chain, surprising Juziap with his fast and unusual movement. Hyun Wook then rushed towards him, catching him by surprise as he thought Hyun Wook was a ranged player like himself. Juziap was able to block the metal beads with his tree vines and tried to counter-attack Hyun Wook but his attacks were also easily dodged by Hyun Wook. Juziap then wondered what was Hyun Wook's plans as those metal beads couldn't do any damage to him. With the metal beads sent to flank his vines, Juziap responded by surrounding himself with more tree vines. As Hyun Wook arrived on top of the protective tree barrier, Juziap thought it was a checkmate as his tree vines had a special effect. The cannibal tree was able to digest off humans that they come into contact with. However, Hyun Wook had expected this move and had transformed his arm into steel. While Juziap was still confused about why his arms were not being digested, Hun Wook prepared his fire breath skill. Juziap was surprised that Hyun Wook was able to use a fire skill and tried to convince him to stop the attacks by offering to share his quest rewards for the unlucky event. Juziap was convinced that Hyun Wook would be tempted. However, he had used this trick before in his previous life and Hyun Wook would not fall for it again. Juziap was confused with the mentions of the previous life and wondered what Hyun Wook was talking about. Hyun Wook then launched his fire breath at Juziap, hoping to burn him to a crisp. At this time, the rescue squad led by Lee Min Hee was about to enter the dome. Due to their low levels, they were allowed entry. When they entered the Seoul Station, they were shocked to see the giant spider monsters and Park Junmo screamed out loud. This caught the guards' attention and asked who was there. As they explained the situation to each other, Lee Min Hee was surprised that there was no civilians' victims and John Mon Hu explained that it was all credit of the AMT soldier who saved them. Lee Min Hee anxiously asked about the whereabouts of Choi Seon Ha and the guard informed that she was controlling the situation in the temporary shelter. John Mon Hu then explained that they had been following the instructions of the other soldier, Lee Hyun Wook. Park Jun Mo confirmed Hyun Wook's identity with the description of spiky hair and sometimes with a sinister smile. Annoyed, Lee Min Hee ordered him to shut up and turned to John Mon Hu and informed him that Hyun Wook was merely AF rank and he will be in command now. John Mon Hu then solemnly asked how Lee Min Hee entered this place since there was a level restriction. He also heard of Hyun Wook's rank earlier but chose to follow his order because he deemed him worthy. In addition, he was AC rank himself and did not think Lee Min Hee was worthy of being in command. He questioned their plans to rescue them from this unlucky event. Fumbling, Li Min He could only say that they planned to set up a barricade and bid out the time. Suddenly, Choi Seon Ha emerged with troubling news. The civilians had heard that it was a double gate and were enraged. When they arrived at the scene, the civilians were complaining that they were hiding the news that it was a double gate and thought that what the other guard said earlier was the truth, that the military were just going to use the civilians as shields to buy time. The guards were surprised to hear that they heard this rumor from another guard with a scar on his nose. With his half-burnt body, Ong Juziap said that he had made preparations for this quest and it was not fair that he was defeated by Hyun Wook now. Annoyed, Hyun Wook sent his metal beads to end his life once and for all. Suddenly, a bright light shined through a portal appearing before Hyun Wook. Two angels appeared out of the portal and Hyun Wook could feel his mana and health recovering rapidly as the angels surrounded him. As he expected, his quest had arrived. As he had stopped a villain, he had been given a chance to become the protector of the world, a guardian.
as the system prompted for his answer on whether to accept the quest or not. Hyun Wook declared that the answer was obvious as he selected his option. Not. As Hyun Wook made his decision to reject the quest to become a guardian, his rejection shocked the two angels. The system gave another prompt to ask Hyun Wook to confirm his answer, he firmly rejected it. While their pretext to save humanity sounded good, they were merely just another group. Although the rewards are guaranteed, his actions would be restricted at times. Furthermore, a guardian could turn into a villain at any time. Just like humanity's worst villain, Gordon Tracy. After all, he was once a guardian as well. As he rejected the guardian quest once again, the two annoyed angels left him and the portal began to close. He then summoned the key hidden in the pile of bones, the first reward of the lucky event, Akashic Armory Key Number 2. This appeared to be the item that he was searching for, even if it meant slaughtering the civilians. As a reward of the event, it was definitely an item that the villains needed and Hyun Wook was happy to keep it instead. It was his plan to screw them up big time. As the guards tried to explain the situation and realized that the person who spreaded the rumors was not one of them, the civilians remained frustrated that they lied about the double gates. There was no guarantee that they were not planning to use them as human shields. Hyun Wook knew that this was caused by Yang Juziop. When he saw Lee Min Hee, he knew that the battalion commander did not give up on the Seoul Station Gate until the end and had sent him in when the vice platoon leader was needed at the perfect time. As the civilians continued to question the abilities of the guards and AMT rescue squad, Hyun Wook appeared and demanded to know what was going on. He warned that if the second wave started now, they would all die. When the civilians said that they did not trust them, Hyun Wook questioned if they had any other choice right now, a statement that shocked everyone. Hyun Wook said that the guards had put their life on the line to protect them and that should be proof enough. He then questioned them if there was anyone else here willing to put their lives on the line for them. Lee Min Hee was annoyed at his tone and questioned his treatment of the civilians and asked about his whereabouts. Hyun Wook declared that he had successfully blocked the second gate, a news that shocked everyone once again. While Lee Min Hee wanted to continue and argue with Hyun Wook, Hyun Wook ordered the civilians to go into hiding now and asked the guards and AMT squad to follow him and everyone moved into action. Lee Min Hee was shocked at this commanding authority as he couldn't even get a word in. Park Junmo had brought in Hyun Wook's sword and Choi Seonha's spellbooks. Hyun Wook then explained the situation to everyone. He voiced his concerns that these spiders were not mentioned in a field guide and while he was able to defeat them thanks to his metal skills, he felt that these monsters were somewhat lacking for an unlucky event. John Monhu shared the same observations. He then mentioned his guess that this was merely the first wave and he expected some spiders in the second wave to have poisonous characteristics. As such, they are advised to wear gas masks beforehand. Given that the poisonous gas may eventually spread to the civilians hidden in the station, their objective would be to lure the monsters to the outside platform. He then explained his plans for the operations. Firstly, when the second wave starts, Hyun Wook will be the one responsible for luring the monsters to the outside platform. The rescue squad and guards will be outside lying in wait and attacking from a spot that they can take cover and hide. Just like the first wave, they just needed to freeze their legs and bide their time. Once they are in position, Hyun Wook would rip out their armor with his metal smash and they would then focus their attacks on that area to take the spiders down. Now comes the key part. For the operations to have a higher chance of success, the platoon and vice platoon leaders must lead them from the high grounds. Lee Min He would focus on helping Hyun Wook teleport using his warp skill so that he could move around easily and focus his mana and stamina on ripping out the spider's armors. As long as Choi Seonha could help to replenish Lee Min He's mana, they should be able to use warp until the fight ends. As the only person well versed in raid tactics, Hyun Wook proclaimed that the platoon leader was the only person capable of handling this risky situation. After being praised and called the rescue captain, Lee Min He was happy to accept his important role in the operations. Hyun Wook truly believed that with the warp skill, they should be able to get through this event. Just as the second wave was about to start, Hyun Wook asked them to get ready. For the unlucky event, there were two passing criteria, to survive for six hours or defeat the boss monster. Just as the first monster of the second wave arrived, Hyun Wook noticed something unexpected. It was the arrival of the boss monster, a towering giant humanoid spider creature. It appeared that the future had changed once again. Hyun Wook immediately ordered everyone to run in light of this shocking change. The boss monster that was supposed to appear only later unexpectedly emerged during the second phase, disrupting the carefully planned tactics of the team. As the future that he knew had changed, Hyun Wook asked all of them to retreat. When they received the order to retreat, they were bewildered, but the platoon leader insisted they hold their positions, determined to prevent the monster from reaching the civilians. 
At that moment, the boss suddenly noticed the body of its comrades and became enraged. With teeth grinding against each other, it emitted a deafening roar. Just as Hyun Wook wondered if the future was changed because of him, the boss monster swung its claws with immense force towards him. With a thunderous crash, the solid concrete ground was smashed into pieces. Fortunately, Hyun Wook managed to dodge the attack. He realized that if he couldn't stop this creature, there would be no survivors in this unlucky event. As Hyun Wook attempted to smash the boss monster's head metallic armor, it had already consumed a third of his mana. Despite this, only two faint cracks appeared as its armor's strength far exceeded expectations. In the momentary confusion, the boss's claws swung towards Hyun Wook and he only managed to narrowly avoid them, and the attack destroyed a pillar behind them. This inspired him to devise a plan, although the chances of success were slim. He believed platoon leader Li Min He would understand his intent and catch on to his plan. Remembering Li Mingxi's combat tactical mind from a previous life, where he used his warp ability to create openings, he hoped he would be able to discern his plan. Li Min He had memorized all the tactical manuals as an officer in an attempt to overcome his warp ability's limitation so that he knew how to use his warp skill at the right time and place during actual combat. This is his ninja way, I mean way of life as a soldier. Meanwhile, Li Min He was growing increasingly frustrated with Hyun Wook's actions as he did not lure it out as planned. Even as he continued to evade the boss's attacks, he remained confident in Li Min He's ability to figure out his plan. As the Soul Station's pillars began to collapse one by one, Min He finally understood what was happening. He wasn't thoughtlessly evading but a deliberate attempt to direct the attacks towards the pillars. Realizing this, he instructed Choi Sionha to give him as much mana as possible as he was going to create the largest warp zone that he can right now. As only the last pillar of the high-speed rail station remained, and the boss's repeated attacks proved futile, it became frustrated and slammed the ground in anger, causing the entire ground to crack open, sending debris flying in all directions. Hyun Wook lost his balance as the boss launched its claw at him again. As he couldn't avoid the next attack, he used up the last of his magic to take on the last attack. With the final strike, the final pillar was severed, causing Hyun Wook's body to fly backward like a cannonball. As the last pillar collapsed, the entire high-speed rail station began to shake violently. Knowing the fate of everyone depended on it, Hyun Wook forced himself to stand as he had to be the bait to distract the boss without alerting it. Meanwhile, Lee Min He was furious, berating Hyun Wook for not leaving as he would be caught up in the warp once he activated it. Without any more energy to maintain it any longer, Min He activated the warp, and a portal appeared beneath the boss monster, engulfing its entire body. At the other end of the portal was the basement of the Soul Station. As the boss monster fell into the basement, all the debris also fell through the portal, burying it alive. Witnessing this scene, Hyun Wook smiled faintly for a great job by Lee Min He. Soon, the whole Soul Station collapsed. As the Soul Station collapsed to bury the boss monster alive, Hyun Wook who acted as the bait was also caught up in the falling debris. He was all worn out from the battle with only 3% of mana left. As he fell into the abyss, memories of his past life flooded back. He recalled an operation where he lost too many comrades and began to doubt his abilities as a commander. His pathetic comments infuriated Sian Yunha the Valkyrie. She asked him that if he ever felt lost, just look around him as there are many people who trust and follow him. When Hyun Wook opened his eyes again, he was greeted by a bright light and Lee Min He and Choi Sionha calling at him. At this critical moment, Lee Min He, with all his power, activated one more warp portal to bring Hyun Wook back from the brink of death. At this moment, the dungeon's countdown continued with less than five hours to go, tormenting Kim Kang Seo and Catherine with each passing second. All media outlets clamored for the battalion commander to speak up, questioning on the measures being taken to deal with the boss monster. The Blue Flower representative also sent a message from the director and vice president, warning Catherine that if the issue wasn't resolved soon, she would lose her position as head of the attack squads. Desperate, Kim Kang Seo looked to Catherine for help, who sighed and said, Looks like I'll have to make some calls. Meanwhile, as Choi Sionha was tirelessly healing Hyun Wook's injuries, filled with worry and responsibility, she exclaimed that she thought she wouldn't see him ever again. Hyun Wook remained lost in thoughts as he realized that the future had changed. He had no idea how much of the past memories that he possessed would be of help and wondered what he should do now. Lee Min He grabbed him by the collar and berated him and asked why he acted alone. He continued to say that his arrogance would have killed everyone if not for his warp skills. The basis of tactics is trust, to trust that his teammates would perform and follow the promised action at the promised time. His rash actions thinking that it was for the sake of everyone was arrogant. He then questioned Hyun Wook if he even trusted his teammates from the start. The words of the Valkyrie echoed in Hyun Wook's mind. He smiled faintly and thanked Lee Min He for the wake-up call. 
Li Min he continued to look perplexed, but Hyun Wook assured him he had thought of a good plan. As the boss monster's skin was made of steel, they can use electricity to deal with it, and this tactic requires everyone to work together. Hyun Wook then announced that the core of the next phase is none other than Park Junmo, who was as stunned as everyone else. Outside the event gate, Kim Kang Seo had announced to the media that the military had deployed the secondary rescue team of the unlucky event. Hearing this, the media began asking with the appearance of the boss monster, if the military strategy was to send a lot of low-level personnel to overwhelm the boss. At the same time, the boss monster had burst out from the ground, clawing its way out of the rubble. Following a unified tactic, the guard team began releasing water balls all over the boss monster. Using an amplification rune, Park Junmo released an enhanced lightning attack at the boss monster, stunning it and keeping it in place. As the boss monster convulsed from the electricity, unable to resist. Suddenly, a man let out a roar, and the resulting shockwave made everyone dizzy, almost causing them to collapse. As it turns out, the secondary team deployed by Kim Kangseo was an S-class player that was not subject to level restrictions. It was none other than the Fist King, Han Tae san At that moment, Han Tae san walked straight up to the boss and told them that they had worked hard, but he will take it from here. Looking at the sudden appearance of the towering figure, Hyun Wook chuckled to see that he was finally here. While the world knew him as the Fist King that was ranked 9th worldwide, Hyun Wook knew him with another nickname, the Lazy Tiger. He was known to have a preference to fight alone just so that he doesn't have to share the loot. Just as Hyun Wook's team trapped the boss monster according to their plan, the Fist King, the whole second rescue team deployed by Kim Kang Seo, had arrived. As the future had changed, Hyun Wook knew the information that he held was no longer reliable and he had initially planned to just give up the reward and to hold the boss monster in place for the next five hours. Han Taesan's timely arrival gave Hyun Wook hope again. In his previous life, as an S-rank that was not subject to any level restrictions, they were able to clear the dungeon in the end after he was deployed at the very last minute. He was also able to become the undefeatable fighter after receiving the unlucky event's clearing reward, the Manan and Mac Liar's secret armor. But this time, his ultimate equipment will be eaten by our very eager Hyun Wook. At this moment, the Fist King and the boss monster had already begun their battle. With a mere lift of his hand, the Fist King effortlessly stopped the boss monster's attack head-on, showcasing his tremendous strength. He remarked that the boss monster's strength was too weak. Suddenly, the Fist King's fist burst into dazzling light, shooting out a beam of light and sent the boss crashing into a wall. The Fist King was impressed when the boss monster emerged without a single scratch on it. Its aggressiveness had triggered his competitiveness and desire for victory. With a light tap of his toe, the Fist King shot out like a meteor. In an instant, he appeared right in front of the boss monster and before it could react, the Fist King struck the boss monster in its face, sending shockwaves throughout the station. At the same time, Hyun Wook had recovered his mana under Choi Seonha's treatment, who urged him to stay here for his treatment. He told her not to worry about him as he won't be using his body and leaped into the battlefield. At the same time, the Fist King launched his iron fist at the boss countless times, causing even its hard steel skin to crack inch by inch. Just then, the skin on the boss's chest suddenly exploded after being smashed by Hyun Wook's skill. The Fist King looked displeased as he turned to Hyun Wook, asking if he had a death wish as he had clearly asked them to stay away. Hyun Wook scoffed at the Fist King's demands, saying that he was unethical as he was the one who barged into their raid. Just as the Fist King was distracted by the argument with Hyun Wook, Hyun Wook suddenly controlled the Cloud Sword to attack the boss monster. The Fist King realized Hyun Wook had played tricks on him. The next moment, the Fist King erupted with power, closely following the steps of the Cloud Sword. Hyun Wook proclaimed that they were the ones who endured the whole crisis and the Fist King only swooped in at the last minute and does not deserve to steal all the credit. In the blink of an eye, both the Cloud Sword and the Fist King landed their attacks on the boss simultaneously, with the Fist King's attack landing on its head while the Cloud Sword stabbed the exposed body. Accompanied by a deafening roar, the boss's body exploded upon impact and was completely engulfed in flames. The system prompt then indicated the boss had been defeated, lifting all restrictions in the area. The dome covering the Seoul station dissipated in an instant. The civilian survivors soon emerged from the station and the new station began to report on a miracle as all the people in Seoul station survived. Then the system prompted that rankings and rewards would be distributed based on the event's contributions. The Fist King looked at his reward with an extremely gloomy expression because his contribution was only ranked second. At the same time, the Cloud Sword was absorbing the unknown energy from the boss monster. Apparently, the one who dealt the final blow to the boss was none other than our MC Hyun Wook, who was ranked first. 
He then received the item, Manan and Mac Liar's Secret Armor, as the unlucky event reward. It was a legendary hero level item, when infused with mana, could generate transparent armor over the skin. Additionally, it had a special skill, opening a subdimensional space to secretly store items. As Hyun Wook excitedly admired his rewards, the Fist King's angry voice appeared from the side, demanding an explanation from Hyun Wook. He immediately consumed the secret armor into his stomach before turning to face the Fist King. He insisted that they were the one who stopped the second wave and the boss and retorted that the Fist King should just be thankful for getting second despite only arriving at the last minute. The Fist King was completely furious as everyone knew that slaying the boss monster takes up 70% of the total contribution to the event reward. So, regardless of what they did before, his contribution would still be higher unless Hyun Wook had stolen his kill. He had even interrupted his six months of secluded training to help with this event. He then demanded to know how Hyun Wook planned to compensate me as he deserved at least a hero grade item. Facing the intense pressure of an S rank player, Hyun Wook stood his ground. The Fist King had no right to argue about time and compensation in front of Hyun Wook after everything that he had gone through in his previous life. No rewards could ever make up for it. Upon hearing this, the Fist King was even more furious. With an overwhelming aura, he swung his fist at Hyun Wook. However, Catherine and Kim Kangseo appeared at the right time and intervened, asking the Fist King to stop. Their sudden appearance stunned both Hyun Wook and Han Tae San. Kim Kangseo declared that the gate has been closed and demanded to know what they are doing now. Luckily, Hyun Wook reacted quickly. He grabbed the Fist King's hand and sincerely said, Thank you for your hard work, great tiger. It's an honor to meet you. If there's nothing else, I'll take my leave now. Hyun Wook immediately turned and ran towards Kim Kangseo to report his status, leaving Han Tae San bewildered. When Han Tae San snapped out of his confusion, he wanted to chase after Hyun Wook but was stopped by Catherine. Although she did not know what happened between the two of them, she reminded him of the surrounding helicopters broadcasting nationwide right now. If he caused a ruckus here, even the Blue Flower Guild wouldn't be able to cover up for him. Suddenly, a portal appeared and the Brigadier General Choi Jung Chil appeared. He was surprised to see the Fist King still here after the gate was closed. Choi Jung Chil then jokingly said that if the Blue Flower Guild is here, there must be no problems, causing Catherine to sigh at the sly old man's tease. Catherine then asked why the Soul Station was in this state as he would have been able to clear the gate without causing that much damage. The Fist King sighed uncomfortably, clarifying that he did not destroy the Soul Station who ranked first in a raid, catching Catherine by surprise. As he had fulfilled all of Catherine's conditions, he reminded her to keep her promise as agreed. Before Catherine could respond, he flew out of sight, leaving her wondering who else could be ranked first. Meanwhile, after listening to Hyun Wook's recount of what happened, Choi Jung Chil questioned the controllable metal limits recorded in his file as his report suggested that he can control a lot more. Catherine who overheard the general mentioning Hyun Wook's F rank status was left stunned as Hyun Wook left with Choi Jung Chil for a walk and a detailed debriefing. As Hyun Wook walked beside the Brigadier General, he knew he had to be careful as Brigadier General was not a man to be trifled with. He was a clever old man with the power of a nuclear weapon who even attracted the attention of the necromancer who attempted to assassinate him several times. As Choi Jung Chil asked for an explanation for his increased power, Hyun Wook explained that after defeating the Cobalt leader, he achieved an accomplishment called Dunce's Rebellion, causing his abilities to instantly improve. As such, the metal he could control increased to 17 kilograms and he had also gained a few new skills. Hyun Wook did not intend to reveal that the F-rankers could progress yet. The old man chuckled, acknowledging that what he said is a possibility and wondered if his actual combat ability should be at C-rank or above. He then asked Hyun Wook if there were any rewards that he wanted. Taking advantage of the situation, Hyun Wook mentioned that there was a prized weapon in his possession that he wanted. It was none other than his treasured item, a hero-grade item, Fail Not Arrow. The sly old man laughed at Hyun Wook's request and quickly changed the subject, granting him a special promotion instead before leaving the scene immediately. A few days later, Hyun Wook was still lying in bed, recuperating from his injuries. There were still 16 hours left to digest the secret armor. Suddenly, teammates from his support squad surrounded him, begging for Hyun Wook's guidance and coaching for their training. Hyun Wook then reflected on the valuable skill he had learned from these events, trust. Just then, Private On Minte, who was severely injured, had recovered and was reporting for duty. Seeing this, Hyun Wook hugged and thanked him, remarking that he had arrived just in time for training. Hyun Wook learned that while he was with these guys in this life, being with them and entrusting his back to them might not be a bad thing after all.
In the near future, a wave of gates will appear throughout Seoul, turning the city into ruins and currently, only Hyun Wook knows of this future. After the past few incidents, Hyun Wook knew that he couldn't stop the future events alone and would need everyone's help. He decided that he needed to make everyone else stronger as well so he grabbed Private on Minte and the rest to train now. Hyun Wook then led the team to a training center that was restricted to those below C rank. The support squad members trembled at the sight, but Hyun Wook just smiled faintly. As members who had even cleared the unlucky event, this training center should be a piece of cake. Hyun Wook then promised to be their backup during the training and pushed all of them in. In the next instant, Hyun Wook shut the door to the training center. This would be the fastest way to improve their combat strength. He then went to the convenience store, intending to buy some refreshments for his squad. Unexpectedly, he encountered the Valkyrie, Seo Yunha. When she approached him with a stern look, she asked about his dunce's rebellion achievement. After reflecting on the events in the previous incidents, Seo Yunha thought that the achievement would explain his abnormal feats but she felt that Hyun Wook was still hiding something as there were times when he acted like he already knew what would happen. Hyun Wook was speechless at first as he did not know what to say. Before Hyun Wook could respond, the broadcast from the military announced that he was to report immediately to the office of the battalion commander. Just as Hyun Wook breathed a sigh of relief, Yunha sternly stated that although she doesn't know what he is after, she will keep an eye on him now. Hyun Wook was glad to get out of the situation and knew he had to stay away from the stubborn Valkyrie for now. He then wondered what the battalion commander wanted from him as his promotion was still a few days ago. Hyun Wook knocked on the battalion commander's office door and after getting permission, he walked in. Unexpectedly, he found the brigadier general arguing with the battalion commander. When the two saw Hyun Wook, Choi jung Chil began to explain the situation. Recently, a red gate had opened in the Shin Rim. Originally, the Blue Flower Guild had the raid rights for it, but all three waves of their raid squads were wiped out. Therefore, the red gate has now been classified as trouble rank 3 difficulty and requires the joint efforts of two or more organizations. Hyun Wook was surprised to hear this as he had not heard of such an incident in his previous life. The entry level is restricted to level 18. Upon entry, it was impossible to leave until the zombie dungeon was conquered. The first thing that Hyun Wook thought of was the necromancer, who was known as a commander of the dead army. Choi Jung Seo then sighed at the arrogant Blue Flower Guild who had sacrificed many of their talented top rookies and still failed in the end. Even though the military doesn't necessarily have to intervene, the Brigadier General believed that Hyun Wook was the perfect candidate for this challenge. It was clear that the battalion commander was concerned with this proposal but it was ultimately Hyun Wook's choice to accept or refuse. As this event did not happen in his previous life, Hyun Wook knew he had to accept since this zombie dungeon could be related to the necromancer and he had to investigate it thoroughly. Hyun Wook announced that he would accept it. However, he also made a request, saying that with his current strength, it seems a bit difficult to conquer the Red Dungeon. If the Brigadier General could give him the fail knot that he mentioned previously, he would guarantee to succeed at the raid. Fail knot was the one-shot arrow that never missed its target that was used by Sir Tristan in The Legend of King Arthur. It had astonishing accuracy and nullification of magic, but it was hard to retrieve it once used, so even in the Brigadier General's hands, it would be used as a last resort. However, as Hyun Wook could control metal, the situation would be different. When the Brigadier General heard Hyun Wook's request for the treasured weapon, he burst into laughter and said that Hyun Wook had guts and proposed making it a deal instead and Hyun Wook will have to bear all the risks if he fails, Hyun Wook smiled confidently and said that the higher the risks, the higher the rewards. It was the norm for sending executives as leaders for dungeon raids. Despite this, Choi jung Chil was sending a regular soldier as the raid leader. This was likely due to his rivalry with the Blue Flower Guildmaster, Yu jae -hyuk. If Hyun Wook succeeded in conquering it, it meant that an ordinary soldier in the army had defeated elite players from the Blue Flower Guild. Even if it failed, it won't be considered the army's failure since they are only here as a backup for Blue Flower. Hyun Wook's success would put the claims of AMT being useless to sleep and give them an advantage in the future struggle for prestige with the Blue Flower. Regardless of the outcome, it was a win-win situation for Choi jung -chil, who was happy to give Hyun Wook fail not right away for the raid. When Choi jung Chil offered to promote Hyun Wook after the raid, Hyun Wook who did not want to be taken advantage of, reminded Choi jung Chil that the fail not was the reward promised for the Seoul Station incident and requested for another reward. This was of course on the condition that he succeeded at the raid. After leaving the battalion commander's office, Hyun Wook finally opened the training center. Inside, there was a C-level monster imprisoned, but it had been defeated by the support squad who worked together. At this moment, Park jun Mo was bursting with confidence, claiming that he didn't even fear the C-level training ground now and was confident he could complete any task. 
As the saying goes, be careful what you wish for. Hearing this, Hyun Wook smiled widely and asked them to armor up, causing them to look perplexed. He then issued the order that they are going on their first ever solo deployment. Two days later, on the transport to the Red Gate, Hyun Wook reminded the squad that as this is a zombie dungeon, they would be using bullets infused with holy power. Hyun Wook had also brought along his new weapon, fail not with him. As they arrived at the Blue Flower Guild base camp, he left Park Junmo in charge while he left to attend the briefing. Soon, the squad also noticed that the Blue Flower Guild did not look very happy to see them. A Blue Flower member told the captain he had heard that this support team consists of low-level awakened individuals who might seriously drag them down. He was also afraid that the army would find out about Operation Retrieval but the captain silenced him immediately, fearing that they might be overheard. However, it was too late as Hyun Wook heard it and wondered what it meant. The captain then ordered his team to leave the AMT troops alone as soon as they entered the dungeon, disregarding their safety as he believed that they needed to be able to protect their own lives anyway. Soon, Hyun Wook arrived at the briefing room, only to find Catherine alone. She had guessed that Hyun Wook would definitely be the one participating in this operation. As it appears, she was very displeased to give him her business card after hiding his identity as a F-ranker during their last encounter. Hyun Wook then reminded her that he did not ask for it in the first place. She then began discussing the battle plan, reminding Hyun Wook that they are only here as a backup and should not get in the way of the Blue Flower Raid squads. However, Hyun Wook wasn't going to obediently follow orders as he believed the army and the Blue Flower both had equal raid rights. Catherine began laughing when she heard Hyun Wook's confidence to take on the raid boss as she believed that the Seoul Station incident was just a fluke. She did not respond to Hyun Wook's further provocation, causing Hyun Wook to suspect that there was something about this raid that he did not know about. It could be related to the Operation Retrieval that he heard earlier. He then proposed a wager with Catherine. If they catch the boss monster before Blue Flower, she would have to give Hyun Wook something he wants. If they lose, Hyun Wook would give his life to her. Hyun Wook knew that there was something hidden inside the gate and he was going to take it for himself. Soon, the Blue Flower Guild began entering the dungeon one after another. The support squad's entry was scheduled for three minutes later. When they entered, they were all stunned by the sight before them. Half of the Blue Flower team had already turned into zombies and were tearing the other half apart. Hyun Wook began to lead the squad around the chaos near the entrance, but suddenly a giant foot blocked their path. They had to tilt their heads up to see the owner of the foot, a hundred meter tall zombie king. The system soon prompts with the notification that the boss monster, the zombie king, had appeared. As one of the squad mates let out a cry after being shocked by the zombie king, the zombie king instantly reached its claws out towards the support team below it. Hyun Wook swiftly ordered the squad to pick up their firearms and fire at the zombie king, which was all blocked by the zombie king's barrier. In an instant, Hyun Wook ordered another squad mate, Choi Taeyang, to execute their plan as discussed. Taeyang began to aim at the zombie king's head. During training days ago, a squad mate raised a question about the purpose of modern firearms in actual combat if they couldn't do much damage to monsters like the high level players. Hyun Wook agreed with the squad mate's observation that the bullets, even with holy energy imbued in it, would not do much damage to the executive level monsters and would feel like rubber bullets to the monsters. However, Hyun Wook emphasized the importance of the assault rifles due to the noise generated by them. He explained that the zombies relied on hearing to locate enemies, so as long as the firearms can disrupt the zombies' hearing, they wouldn't find them. However, if the zombies in the dungeon have other senses that are working as well, their chances of succeeding in the raid will become slim and they would likely become zombies and start killing each other. At this moment, Taeyang, who was the sniper of the squad, began to aim his rifle at the zombie king's ears. Under a barrage of attacks, the zombie king temporarily lost its hearing. At the same time, another member threw two grenades at their side. The resulting explosion created a huge explosion, which deafened the zombie king ears and it lost track of them temporarily. However, the loud explosion had attracted the other zombies to run towards them instead. Hyun Wok then immediately activated his ability to control the assault rifles. After he took control of the weapons, he sent them flying towards another direction, luring them away from the location of the main squad. As the zombies were lured away, Kim Kyung Jin, the thief of the squad, looked enviously at the rare equipment on the zombie blue flower guild player. Hyun Wook began to control more grenades to explode in a location far away to divert the zombies' attention. After the zombies were diverted away as planned, Hyun Wook noticed something unusual, there were too few zombies. In addition, the boss monster's name was also distorted in the notification window. On the cliff above them, a man was secretly watching the support operation. Seeing Hyun Wook's performance, the man chuckled, thinking an interesting group of guys had entered. 
Soon, the support squad explored the depths of the dungeon. There were no facilities or zombies, which puzzled Hyun Wook. Suddenly, he sensed the approach of an unfamiliar metal behind them. In an instant, he sent a dagger behind them and it was aimed at the stalker's neck. It turned out to be the survivor of the previous third raid squad of the Blue Flower Guild, Kim Tae Suk. He was a sniper with a stealth skill that probably helped him survive until now. Starved, he began begging for some food from Hyun Wook's squad. Outside, Catherine had received news of the secret mission issued by the leader of the Gugwen group to all the big guilds. The leader's grandson who was in the second raid had died in this dungeon while carrying a hero-grade weapon, the Spear of Achilles. The player who managed to retrieve both will receive 80 billion in rewards as well as a massive sponsorship to the player's guild. After receiving food from the support squad, Kim Tae-suk had also informed Hyun Wook of their main priority of the mission, which is to retrieve the spear. After learning this, Hyun Wook finally understood why Catherine was so careful. Tae-seop then explained that because the Achilles spear was the symbol of the Gugwon group, the leader spared no expenses for its retrieval. This was also the reason why the Blue Flower Guild was so hostile towards the support squad. The mysterious man grew bored of waiting for Hyun Wook's team to make his day more interesting after watching them sit around for some time. He then decided to make it more interesting. At this moment, Hyun Wook suddenly began to sense a large amount of metal approaching them. Soon, there were as many as 120 metal objects nearby. The mysterious person who had been secretly observing Hyun Wook's squad had summoned a large number of zombies, ready to have some fun. Hyun Wook had sensed the danger and immediately ordered the team to implement Plan C. The team understood and quickly brought out a backpack full of steel balls. Everyone also began to consume mana and health potions that would replenish their mana and stamina for the next six minutes. Hyun Wook also gave Park Junmo a separate instruction in preparation of what is to come. Unaware of the situation, Kim Tae Seop anxiously asked what the plan C was. But before anyone could explain, they heard the thundering sound of galloping footsteps behind them. The monsters were about to reach their location and Hyun Wook stood at the back of the team and ordered everyone to evacuate immediately. However, the mysterious person sneered disdainfully at this point as he thought that their best tactic was to sacrifice one of their team members as bait, which would serve no purpose anyway if the bait was killed instantly. At this moment, Hyun Wook controlled the numerous steel balls and confronted the zombie army by himself. Kim Tae Suk found this plan to abandon Hyun Wook reckless but Park Jun Mo confirmed that this tactic was prepared by Hyun Wook and he will not fail. Surrounding himself with the steel balls, Hyun Wook charged towards the zombie horde and many of the zombies were hit by the steel balls. After hitting the zombies with the steel balls, Hyun Wook smashed the steel balls to trigger an explosion, causing the countless sharp metal shards to pierce the heads of the zombie wolves, decimating them in an instant. Hyun Wook swiftly used this tactic and quickly defeated most of the zombie wolves. Seeing this, the mysterious person frowned slightly. It turned out that the steel balls were infused with divine power, but making such a loud noise would surely attract the attention of the other zombies. As expected, all the zombies, including the zombie king, turned to look at the source of the explosion. The zombie king then roared in anger, ordering all the zombies to attack that direction. At this time, Hyun Wook had already dealt with all the zombie wolves. But with his metal sense, he discovered a very high-grade metal nearby and noticed a figure nearby. At this moment, Hyun Wook's mind raced with countless thoughts as he wondered if this person could be that person. The werewolf beside the mysterious person suddenly leaped up, appearing above Hyun Wook in an instant to launch an attack. Using his skill combo, Hyun Wook managed to elegantly evade the werewolf's attacks. However, the mysterious person had summoned even more zombie wolves. Seeing that Hyun Wook had already used up most of the steel balls and mana, the mysterious man thought this was the end for Hyun Wook. However, Hyun Wook still had a trump card in his deck. As the metal shards of the exploded steel balls began to gather in the air above the zombies, Hyun Wook sent all of them falling at the zombie horde. With the shards piercing through them like countless needles from the sky, the zombie horde was soon wiped out. As the zombie king and his soldiers were approaching Hyun Wook's location, the fleeing support squad began to throw grenades along the way to divert the zombie horde away from Hyun Wook. Kim Tae Seop was puzzled by the support team's actions. They had just managed to escape by using Hyun Wook as bait and he did not understand why they would want to provoke the zombie king again. Park Junmo explained that this was their plan C, to lure the zombies away from Hyun Wook. When the mysterious person saw the nearby explosion, he understood Hyun Wook's tactics. It turned out that Hyun Wook wasn't bait from the beginning and he was genuinely intending to conquer the dungeon. Finally, he couldn't contain his amusement, as this was just too interesting to him. Hyun Wook stared at the mysterious man from afar and wondered what was his objective in this raid gate. His time was running out as the potion's effect will only last for less than three minutes. 
Hyun-wook realized that the hero-grade weapon, the Achilles Spear, was in the mysterious man's possession all along after he summoned it from the giant serpent's mouth. He then began to question the mysterious man if he was the necromancer. Hearing Hyun-wook's words, the mysterious person showed a surprised expression. With a strong killing intent emitted by him, the mysterious man questioned Hyun-wook on how he knew the existence of the necromancer and who on earth he was. Looking at how the surrounding zombies were not resurrecting and how the mysterious man reacted to his question, Hyun Wook could guess that he was not the necromancer but was somehow connected to him. The mysterious man was furious that Hyun Wook did not respond to his question. With the Achilles spear in hand, he launched a thunder strike at Hyun Wook. With no time to react, Hyun Wook could only raise his arms to block, emitting a clang of metal and iron. Fortunately, Hyun Wook had completely absorbed the Manan and Mac liar's secret armor and fused it with the skill steel body rendering his defense strong enough to deflect the blow. Knowing that he was outmatched, Hyun Wook immediately created some distance from the mysterious person while simultaneously launching a dagger to attack him on his back. However, such petty tricks wouldn't work on the mysterious man who easily blocked the dagger. Hyun Wook quickly followed up by launching the steel ball fragments from all directions at the mysterious man. Unexpectedly, the mysterious person's pet snake surrounded him and blocked most of the damage. The mysterious man was surprised at Hyun Wook's attack pattern at just level 18. At the same time, Hyun Wook also guessed that the mysterious man's level was way past the Red Gate's level restrictions by how he easily stopped his attacks. He began to question how the mysterious man got inside the gate. Hyun Wook also noticed that the fragments with divine power were burning on the mysterious person's skin. Hyun Wook knew that if he was a player who is harmed by divine power, it would mean that he was a vampire. They were the evil tribe who destroyed the AMT when it was found that the soul wave was coming. The mysterious person flung the fragments aside in anger, threatening Hyun Wook with dismemberment if he continued not to answer his questions. He then aimed the spear at Hyun Wook, charging up energy in the Achilles spear. If he unleashes the hero level weapon's true power at Hyun Wook, even his indomitable steel body would be useless in face of it. With the potion's duration lasting for only another two minutes, Hyun Wook knew he had to finish the fight within that time. He was still concealing the fail not arrow in his sleeve as he knew he only had one chance to secure the win. At this moment, the Achilles spear had finally charged up. The mysterious person lunged with a spear thrust towards Hyun Wook and a destructive black energy suddenly shot out from the spear's tip. Hyun Wook had foreseen the attack and barely dodged it while releasing his cloud sword above them. Just as the cloud sword descended on the mysterious man, it was blocked by the black snake. The mysterious person arrogantly claimed that Hyun Wookie's tricks were useless releasing black energy and sweeping the battlefield. With the snake defending against all long-distance attacks while the mysterious man had the Achilles spear in his possession, making close-range combat next to impossible, Hyun Wook was at a complete disadvantage as he couldn't even approach. Watching Hyun Wook dodge continuously, the mysterious person called out in frustration again, saying that no one would know the identity of that individual. Without a choice, he had to play his last card sooner than he expected. He began to answer the mysterious man saying that he was just a foot soldier to distract him while he slowly got into position of the trap set by Hyun Wook. Without realizing, the mysterious man soon walked in front of the claymore mine set up by Hyun Wook earlier. It was clear that he had not gone to the military before. Nearby, the support squad was still trying to lead the zombie horde away from Hyun Wook. Kim Tae Suk tried to stop them, saying that Hyun Wook was probably dead by now and they should just find somewhere to hide. Jun Mo remained hopeful that Hyun Wook wouldn't fail as he had not gotten the signal from Hyun Wook yet. As it turns out, earlier, Hyun Wook had informed Junmo to stick a claymore mine to his back. When the squad heard the claymore explosion, it would signal that he had used the last resort and the squad should start to hide with the other squad mates. With the mysterious man in front of the claymore now, Hyun Wook instantly triggered the mine remotely. With a thunderous roar, countless steel balls imbued with divine power were launched, catching the mysterious man in the middle of the explosion. When the dust settled, it was clear that the black snake took the brunt of the explosion's damage and collapsed while the mysterious person was only slightly injured. The man, unaffected by the explosion, mocked Hyun Wook's weak attempts to kill the one chosen by that individual, however, before he could react. Hyun Wook launched the fail not arrow at the mysterious man, piercing him in his chest and pinning him firmly to a tree. The vampire's face was filled with incredulity at the speed of the attack as even he couldn't see it. This was because the arrow had the ability to lock onto its target and hit with 100% success rate and even had the skill to ignore magic resistance. As he tried to pull out the arrow to no avail, he realized that it had been Hyun Wook's target to deal with the snake using the claymore mine all along. The mysterious man attempted to pull the arrow out with brute force but found it immovable, prompting a gentle smile from Hyun Wook. 
Don't worry, I won't kill you. But now it's my turn to ask questions. Earlier, when the support team was trying to lure the zombie army away from Hyun Wook, Kim Tae Suk tried to stop him. However, Jun Mo insisted that they had not received Hyun Wook's signal. At this time, an explosion occurred at Hyun Wook's location and they knew that it was the signal sent by Hyun Wook. Everyone tensed up, worried about Hyun Wook's situation. When Kim Tae Suk happily told everyone this is the time to hide somewhere while they wait for the rear raid squad to get here. Jun Mo berated him for making light of the situation when the signal meant that one of their squad mates could have just perished. Just as Kim Tae Suk continued to urge them to hide before it was too late, a building began to form at their location and soon, a castle emerged out of thin air. It was the Zombie King's castle, Ndako, being manifested. Together with the castle, there were zombies being manifested as well. Jun Mo ordered the squad to lay low and keep quiet to not attract the zombies' attention. However, Kim Tae Suk ran away out of fear and soon caught the attention of the zombies who began chasing after the whole squad. The squad then began firing at the zombies while retreating and trying to find a place to hide. The mysterious man was unable to remove the arrow and it had nullified any magic resistance that he might have. Even if Hyun Wook was unable to kill the vampire without divine power, he could let the vampire bleed indefinitely, as it would be more painful than death. Hearing this, the mysterious person also felt fear as Hyun Wook's words were indeed true and he knew too much for a low-level soldier. Pushing the arrow further into his wounds, Hyun said it was time for him to answer the questions. He began asking if he was related to the Gugwang group's grandson who died in the raid. The mysterious man continued to resist Hyun Wook's arrow while Hyun Wook asked the second question, Do you know the true identity of the necromancer? The mysterious person grinned and replied, That person could be your comrade, or even your family member. It can be anyone. Hyun Wook quickly deduced that the mysterious person had never seen the necromancer because he was someone desperate for recognition, but now he was not giving him a straight answer. Hyun Wook tried to agitate the mysterious man, saying that he must not be important enough to the necromancer for him to reveal his real identity to him. At this time, the snake had recovered and was moving behind Hyun Wook. Hyun Wook continued to ask who the man was to the necromancer. The vampire was frustrated at Hyun Wook's questioning as though he knew the necromancer. He did not believe Hyun Wook would know who the necromancer is since he has not awakened yet. At this time, the black snake also launched its sneak attack at Hyun Wook but a black golden weapon fell from the sky, piercing through the snake's head. It was Hyun Wook who controlled the Achilles spear. It had the effect of making wounds extremely difficult to heal. Hyun Wook thanked the man for the spear and promised to eat, I mean, use it well. Hyun Wook couldn't believe that this man would be so loyal to the necromancer who hadn't even awakened yet. There were too many unanswered questions here. While Hyun Wook asked how the man barged into the raid, the man asked the same question as he revealed that he was the one who opened the gate. He had also specifically set the entry level to 18, surprising Hyun Wook with the revelation that a player can control a gate. The vampire saw one of his rings light up and announced that phase 2 will begin soon. Soon, a building also began to manifest at their location and Hyun Wook had to summon the arrow back or risk losing it. As the appearance of the Ndako castle was announced, the entry restriction had also been raised to level 30. At this time, the mysterious person's laughter came from behind the wall. He promised Hyun Wook that after this phase, his raid gate will be completed in all earnest and they will experience the true horror of the world by his design. Meanwhile, the zombie king returned to his castle, where the support squad were hiding from the zombies. He soon arrived at the location where his eyes were stored. At the moment the zombie king got his eyes back, all the zombies underwent a mutation and had their sight restored as well. The system prompted that the zombie king, Baron Samadhi's descent has officially begun. The mysterious man continued to laugh and declared that Hyun Wook's comrades would be offered as sacrifice for the zombie king and soon, the zombie horde would exit the gate and swarm to the outside world. In the depths of the castle's shadows, the support squad soldiers, still hiding in the castle, began to notice three enigmatic jars materializing at the castle's entrance. Their intrigue swiftly turns to alarm as the zombie king emerges, seizing one of the jars to extract his eyes from within, triggering a transformative ripple effect as the other zombies underwent a mutation and had their sight restored as well. The zombies began to notice the support squad hiding in the corner and Park Junmo had no choice but to open fire. He gave the order to the raid squad that the zombies had developed vision and he would cover them while to escape. This caught the attention of the zombie king, who launched his spiked whip in his direction. Just when he thought it was over for him, a holy grenade exploded in front of him, deflecting the whip attacks. On Min Tae and Choi Min Jae were firing at the zombie king to attract his attention to give Park Jumbo time to escape. Instead of attacking, the zombie king merely stood in front of the jars, seemingly to protect them. 
They did not want to leave Park Junmo behind and continued their assault, willing to go down with Junmo instead of abandoning him. Touched by his teammates' actions, Junmo issued the order to throw all their grenades to buy more time for their retreat. On the other side of the dungeon, the mysterious vampire, let's call him, Suits, vanished into the shadows after hinting to Hyun Wook that his comrades would be the sacrifice for the zombie king's descent. Realizing the severity of the situation, Hyun Wook was already on the way to find his squad mates. Hearing the sound of grenades coming from the building, he rushed towards them. Earlier, when Hyun Wook gave Park Junmo the instructions of his last resort as the Claymore, Hyun Wook gave Park Junmo the order to lead the squad if he couldn't return. Despite this, Park Junmo stopped Hyun Wook and said that they will be waiting for his return no matter what. Touched, Hyun Wook promised to return to them. As he reached the castle, a few more zombies continued to manifest in front of him. With no time to lose, he grabbed the Achilles spear and used his mana to unlock the spear's power, unleashing them at the zombies. He could only ignore the system's warnings of the high mana consumption since he had already made a promise to his squad mates. Back at the castle's entrance, the zombie king's descent had been interrupted and the zombie king realized that one of his jars was missing. As it turned out, Kim Kyung Jin with the thief trait had taken it before escaping as it seemed like something that was important for the zombie king. Just as the zombies were about to reach him, they were once again pushed back by the squad. At this time, they had finished setting up the C4 in the narrow hallway. As the tank, on Min Tae stood in front with his shield. As the zombies almost reached them, they activated the C4, causing a giant explosion in the castle, eliminating the zombies. Luckily, the squad mates are all okay. With the entryway blocked, they began to find another exit way as they are now trapped in the castle. Suddenly, the wall suddenly began to show cracks and the spiked whip of the zombie king broke through as the squad mates began scrambling for cover. The zombie king was looking for his jars. Upon seeing it with the squad, the zombie king gave an eerie smile, sending shivers up the squad mate's spines. Halt! A voice appeared and caught the zombie king's attention. Upon realizing who the owner of the voice was, the squad mates gave a sigh of relief. He had finally arrived, Corporal Lee Hyun Wook. At this time, Hyun Wook, while panting, furiously asked, Who dared to mess with my squad? Hyun Wook yelled at the zombie king, saying that he is the only one who can bully his squad mates and they looked at him in disbelief. Despite his big talk, Hyun Wook did not have much mana left and began to wonder how to defeat this monster. As the zombie king raised his hand at Hyun Wook's direction, Hyun Wook thought that he was a ranged attacker. Surprisingly, the zombie king did not attack Hyun Wook. Could it be because Hyun Wook was just next to that mysterious jar? The support squad reacted quickly and opened their gear packs for Hyun Wook, which contained more metal beads and potions. As the zombie king charged towards Hyun Wook and tried to stomp him with his feet, Hyun Wook activated his metal combo to dodge it. The zombie king then quickly followed up with his spike chain attacks. When the support squad threw the gear towards Hyun Wook, they attracted the zombie king's attention that caused him to attack them. Hyun Wook also ran towards his squad mate, activating the Achilles spear power while asking on Min Tae to shield the front and they managed to deflect the spike attacks from hitting the squad directly. Hyun Wook instantly grabbed one of the mana star potions and drank it, allowing his mana to recover. Declaring to the zombie king that he is his opponent now, Hyun Wook fired the metal beads at the zombie king. Combined with his metal smash skill, the beads exploded with holy power but it was blocked by the zombie king's barrier. Even his blade was easily stopped by the barrier. Hyun Wook knew that he needed to be careful here or he would lose all his weapons. With his enhanced steel arms, he was able to deflect the spike arms attacks but he was in a dilemma as he couldn't retreat to look for his weaknesses as his squad mates were just behind him. He began to wonder why the descent stopped as it would suggest that the zombie king had a weakness. However, time was running out for him to figure it out. At this time, Kim Kyung Jin smashed the jar and took out a sword that he stole earlier. Despite the squadmates warning not to mess with the dungeon items as they did not know how the dungeon would react, Kyung Jin knew that they had to do something to help Hyun Wook. As he prepared to stab the liver that was contained in the jar, the zombie king also launched his spike whip towards the squad to stop him. As the sword stabbed into the liver, the zombie king let out a cry and the intense pain caused the spike whip to go off course, missing the squad. Hyun Wook was relieved that they were okay and wondered what happened earlier. The zombie king turned towards the remaining jar and broke it to reveal the heart hidden within. The zombie king then absorbed the heart and managed to force the restart of his descent, now at 66.6%. .6%. The zombie king let out a loud roar as he felt his power returning back to him. The level of the red gate had also increased from level 30 to 53. Looking at the heart and the liver that were just destroyed, Hyun Wook finally figured out the zombie king's weakness. 
Similar to the canopic jars of Egypt which stored a mummy's organs, those jars contained the organs of the zombie king and the heart, which should contain the spirit of the zombie king, was the weakness. This would be the opportunity to attack with his guard down while relying on his barrier. Hyun Wook first fired the fail not arrow, which would nullify the magic barrier of the zombie king. Although the barrier was broken, the zombie king was able to heal through the descent effect. As the zombie king laughed, thinking that Hyun Wook would not be able to defeat him, Hyun Wook followed up with his next attack and threw the real attack, the Achilles spear, which had the effect of anti-healing. As the unlocked power of the spear flew directly at the zombie king's heart, it instantly destroyed the heart, causing the zombie king to cry out in pain. At the same time, the zombie king had already launched his spike whip at Hyun Wook. Just as Hyun Wook was about to dodge them with his metal combo, he realized that he had run out of mana and was in huge trouble. After unleashing the spear's power, Hyun Wook ran out of mana without realizing. As the spike whip was flying towards him, he had no way to escape the area of attack. Just as one of the arms was about to hit him, On Min Tae appeared to block the attack with his half broken shield. Unexpectedly, Min Tae deployed a shield skill and was able to withstand the attacks with Hyun Wook safe behind him. The appearance of the new skill of Min Tae surprised Hyun Wook. As it turns out, after entering the dungeon, he had been leveling up at a rapid speed and the last time he blocked the zombie king's attack, he managed to level up again and gained a new skill, Magic Shield. Although he was glad for him, Hyun Wook berated Min Tae for using a skill that he had not used before at such a critical moment as it could fail to withstand the attack and he would be badly injured as well but Min Tae just wanted to protect Hyun Wook. Hyun Wook comforted him that it was his job to protect the squad and asked them not to push themselves too much. At this time, the zombie king roared in pain again. Due to the constant damage that he was receiving from the spear, the descent was disrupted again. As the descent was incomplete, the zombie king's body was breaking down and would soon return to death. Despite this, the zombie king continued firing his spike whip at Hyun Wook's direction that scattered all around them. He was already unable to control his body and the attacks were meant to be a last-ditch effort. The rest of the squad had also come out into the building to support Hyun Wook. Park Junmo instructed sniper Choi Tae Yong to block the zombie king's vision with his shooting as much as possible. They were executing the disturbance tactics until Hyun Wook recovers his mana. They began firing at the zombie king to attract his attention. When Hyun Wook asked them not to do anything dangerous, Junmo asked him to let them help as they would be leaving the last blow to him. While the squad was scrambling for safety while maintaining their fire at the zombie king, Hyun Wook could only watch from the sidelines as his mana was still recovering. Soon, the squad mates were running out of bullets. With 19% mana, Hyun Wook rushed forward as he couldn't wait any longer. With his metal combo skill, he leaped on the spike whip and moved towards the zombie king. At this time, he knew that the only way to take down the zombie king was to destroy his organs. Out of the three canopic jars, only the eyes remained. Summoning back his cloud blade, Hyun Wook jumped towards the zombie king's face. As before, Hyun Wook first fired the fail not arrow to nullify the magic barrier before going through the hole and landing on the zombie king's face. He then asked the zombie king to drop dead and stab the cloud blade at his eyes and it began to absorb the unknown energy and reached 49%. As the zombie king collapsed to the ground, the notification popped up to confirm that Baron Samadhi had been slain. The squad began to cheer as Hyun Wook retrieved the reward, a crown of light and darkness of the mythological rank that even had a special feature that was currently locked. At this time, due to the death of the zombie king, the castle Ndako began to collapse as well. Even though they had not farmed for items and points inside the castle, they had no choice but to evacuate now. When they escaped the castle, another notification popped up, indicating that the raid was over and the gate would be closing now and they continued to run towards the closing gate. Outside the Red Gate, the Blue Flower Guild was preparing for the second raid after gathering the level 53 and higher players. As the assistant asked Catherine if an independent raid would be an issue after their third failure, Catherine had no choice but to disregard the regulations as she was more concerned with the Gu Guang group's mission as their failure to accomplish it would cause the group to stop supporting the guild. Suddenly, they noticed that the gate was closing and they thought that the Vanguard raid squad had actually managed to complete the raid. Unexpectedly, Hyun Wook's support squad were the ones leaping out of the gate just before it closed. As Hyun Wook praised the squad for a job well done and announced the clearing of the raid mission, the squad began cheering. Catherine was furious to see the second-rate military squad clearing the mission and wondered who on earth this Hyun Wook guy was. Inside the red gate, Kim Tae Sook of the Blue Flower Guild was still rushing towards the gate entrance without knowing that the gate had already been closed. Suddenly, he saw Suits and was about to turn back when he heard Suits called out to him, begging him not to leave. Thinking that he was a human from the rescue squad, Tae-suk was relieved to see him. 
The next second, Suits disappeared before his eyes and bit him from behind, sucking him dry of blood. After recovering, Suits was still furious at Hyun Wook for messing up his plans and he vowed to take his revenge. Outside the gate entrance, Hyun Wook ordered the squad to line up while he approached Catherine. Catherine began asking about the status of her team but was informed by Hyun Wook that it was already too late for them when they entered the dungeon. Catherine was in disbelief that they had succeeded at the raid on their own and Hyun Wook merely asked her to confirm once the gate analysis results came out. Catherine couldn't believe that Hyun Wook was an F-ranker but reserved her judgment after the results were out. She then asked if they had seen a spear item inside, either in the possession of a zombie blue flower guild member or in the dungeon's treasure house. Earlier, just before Hyun Wook escaped the dungeon, he actually summoned the spear back and used the new secret tattoo skill to store the spear in secret as a tattoo on his body. He pretended that he had not seen any spears and told Catherine not to change the subject and reminded her of their bet earlier. Hyun Wook asked if the great department head of the Soul Attack Squad of the Blue Flower Guild would go back on her words, causing Catherine to shake in anger. Just as Hyun Wook turned around, saying that he would come back to retrieve his rewards, Catherine grabbed his wrist, asking him to join the Blue Flower Guild now, guaranteeing him the best treatment in the industry. At the same time, the Brigadier General arrived through a portal. His smile faded away when he noticed that Catherine was grabbing on to Hyun Wook, who let go immediately. He teased her, asking if she was trying to poach their soldier. In addition, looking at the troops behind them, he questioned if Blue Flower was trying to disobey the rules and prepared for a separate raid. He said that together with the matters with the Gu Guang group, the Blue Flower had crossed many lines here at the Red Gate and he vowed to file an official complaint about this to the Blue Flower Guild Master and inform the other guilds as well. Incapable of offering a rebuttal, she could only clench her fists in frustration. As the results revealed their 100% raid contribution, the Brigadier General was pleased and he couldn't wait to see the look on the Blue Flower Guild Master's face. While he praised Hyun Wook for his extraordinary performance, Hyun Wook said that it was a team effort and wanted to ask for the rewards he promised, but the Brigadier General cut him off, offering the squad members promotion and a chance for a rank re-evaluation. Hyun Wook, knowing that the old man was trying to get out of giving Hyun Wook the reward he promised, loudly thanked him for his generosity and reminded him of the promised rewards again. Knowing that he couldn't get out of this anymore, he asked Hyun Wook what he wanted and was surprised to hear that Hyun Wook wanted to equip his whole squad with weapons with divine power when the zombie gate was now over. Soon, news of Hyun Wook and the squad's achievements spread throughout the camp. People were surprised to hear that Hyun Wook even received a scouting offer from Blue Flower and wondered if he is now superior to Sergeant Choi Young Hoon as they began to look forward to their matchup once he was back from his deployment. At the other corner, the squad mates were receiving too much attention from the others as well, making them feel uneasy. However, Park Junmo was reveling in the spotlight, regaling female soldiers with tales of their battle. When asked how they became so strong, Park Junmo credited it to Hyun Wook's secret training. Back in his room, Hyun Wook was about to consume the crown when he was interrupted by Lee Won Suk. Upon entering, Lee Won Suk kneeled down and begged for Hyun Wook's forgiveness for his past actions. After consuming the crown, he heard that Lee Won Suk wanted to receive special training from him as well. Although Hyun Wook did not like that guy, he knew that the Soul Gates incident was coming soon and they would need all the help they could get to save more lives. Hence, he agreed to Won Suk's request and he was too early to be happy as Hyun Wook promised him a hellish experience and he grabbed him for their first training. Back inside the Red Gate, a portal suddenly appeared in front of Suits. A bald giant vampire appeared out, berating Suits for his failure that resulted in the loss of many items. Although they would have left him here to starve to death, the blonde vampire said he was lucky as they had been summoned. It was time to launch the attack on Seoul. In his office, Guild Master of Great Mountain, Ki Bek Jun was on the phone with someone. He reassured the person that after the failure of the candidate at the Seoul station, he had prepared for follow up actions and even mobilized personnel in the black market just in case. Despite the person's skepticism, he reassured the person that he would find the key at all costs. Looking at the state of Yang Juziop's corpse, he deduced that the thief of the key used fire as a weapon and was likely someone from the AMT. It was his plan to attack and wipe out the first AMT battalion opening four gates at the same time at different locations. He then informed the chairman that he would take care of the situation in Korea. After the call, he was enraged and crushed the phone with his hand and entered the room where the vampires were located. He then gave them the new orders, which were to invade the AMT battalion when the wave started and destroy everything that was breathing using any methods possible, making Blondie very excited. Soon, it was the day of the support squad's promotion. The battalion commander praised the squad for their performance. He had always believed that he could create the right culture without leaving anyone behind. Just before he was about to go on another long rant, 
he received a phone call about Kaido and he had to leave and let someone else wrap up the promotion ceremony in his place. Hyun Wook was surprised to hear the name of Okita Kaido. In his previous life, Kaido was the Sword Saint assassin who murdered Sword Saint Guk Songkyo. After he was found entering the country at Busan port, Battalion Commander Kim Kong Suk was sent to chase him and he was not around when the two vampires attacked the 1st AMT Battalion. It seemed like the incident of the past that Hyun Wook knew had started and he wondered if the future that he knew would unfold as it did and whether they could make it out of that future alive. A few of the soldiers were also able to get their ranking advanced after the re-evaluation test. While they were celebrating, Park Junmo looked a little sad as his skill ranking did not improve. However, on the bright side, he did manage to get a new high-grade weapon. Hyun Wook had also received briefcases of metal pegs in preparation of the upcoming event. With that, he was ready to face whatever future that comes at them and he vowed to destroy everything that stood in his way and gobble it up. A few days later, a familiar scene appeared before us. Once again, Park Junmo and Hyun Wook were doing their night duty at a guard house. Looking at this watch, Hyun Wook was relieved that the incident did not happen earlier than before, which meant that the changes he created so far were not enough to alter the Soul Wave incident yet. He then walked towards Park Junmo, asking if he trusts Hyun Wook. After that, Hyun Wook told Junmo that they are going to leave their post, again. On the other side of the camp, On Min Tae and Park Sung Mo were also performing their night duties with Choi Seonha. They had also been doing many night duties recently as Hyun Wook said it was training for them. Suddenly, they noticed a mysterious figure in front of the entrance. They began to warn the figure to turn over and when the figure ignored their repeated warnings, they had no choice but to shoot it down and they were surprised to see a dead zombie in front of them. Before long, they found themselves facing a horde of zombies that were charging at them. Min Tae was able to close the front gate while Park Sung Mo gave cover fire. With Min Tae's magic shield, they were able to temporarily push back the zombies' attacks. Hearing the bullet firing at the front of the guardhouse, Hyun Wook knew that the hellish soul wave incident had started. Back in the executive lounge, Seo Yunha was diligently working on her report when she suddenly had an eerie feeling that something was wrong, prompting her to investigate further. Peeking into a nearby dorm room, she stumbled upon a terrifying scene, military executives ensnared and immobilized by sinister serpents. Before she realized what was happening, tentacles lashed out from the darkness to attack her and she could barely dodge them before she was struck with a brutal knee strike at her face. Found you. The third daughter of the Holy Knight Order's captain, declared Suits, who was sent to defeat her. Reacting swiftly, Yunha countered Suits' attack with a swift kick, igniting a fierce battle that spilled outside the building. Amidst the clash, she demanded to know who he was. Noticing the area where her holy palm touched him being burnt and the rapid healing power, she speculated who Suits was. Suits confidently said that there was no need to introduce himself as she would be dead by his hand soon, although it would be a waste to kill someone as pretty as her. She then noticed that countless skeleton monsters were emerging out of a gate nearby and she wondered why a gate was appearing here. Suits attacked her while she was distracted and wrapped his whip around her neck. Although he wanted to play a bit more with her, he did not have much time left and wanted to finish her right away. As Yunha didn't have any weapons with her, she had no ways of countering his attack and could only be dragged toward Suits. Just as she was about to lose consciousness, a bullet broke the whip and pushed Suits back. Our MC, Hyun Wook, had arrived to rescue her. Suits was annoyed that another military rat interrupted his plans again, just like that certain someone from the last time. Suits instantly recognized Hyun Wook when he took off his helmet and began to curse his presence. Min Tae was still blocking the gate with the horde of zombies, waiting for the rapid response unit to arrive. Even with Sung Mo and Choi Seonha's support, they were barely holding on. Just as the gate was about to get torn down, the rapid response unit arrived as reinforcements and began to summon fireballs to launch at the zombies. Just as the skills were about to finish casting, a vampire appeared behind them, and slashed through the rapid response unit in a flash. As the speedy vampire landed on the top of the guard house, the rest were in shock and dismay. The rapid response unit didn't even have the time to cry for help before they were all cut down by Speedy. Just as she was about to finish off Min Tae and the rest, she noticed something outside the gate. Amidst the chaos, there was a soldier drinking rum while walking through the horde of zombies. As one of the zombies tried to attack that soldier, it missed and broke his rum bottle. The mysterious soldier was annoyed by the fact that his rum was now gone and began slashing through the horde of zombies with the broken bottle with lethal precision. He then yelled at Speedy, asking if she was their leader and what she was going to do about his rum. Speedy laughed and thought she could have some fun with him but before she could react, he appeared behind her, asking her to pay for his rum. When Speedy tried to attack him, he instantly cut off her hands. 
Seeing who the mysterious soldier was, Sionha and the rest began to cheer. He has finally arrived, the number one ace, Sergeant Choi Young Jun. Somebody. Give this man his rum. Speedy was taken aback to hear that this is the famous Choi Young Jun as they did not expect him to be here since he was deployed. Young Jun explained that he came back earlier as he had successfully completed the task given to him and he remained focused on getting his rum back. Annoyed, Speedy, with her remaining arm, launched a series of attacks towards Young Jun but he remained unfazed and effortlessly evaded them. Before she realized what happened, he had already moved towards Min Tae and asked to borrow their bayonet. When Min Tae explained that it would be hard to fight her with a normal bayonet as she seemed to be a vampire. However, Young Jun was too drunk to realize this as he still thought she was a zombie, but a zombie won't be able to talk. Acknowledging Young Jun's formidable skills to be known as a powerful candidate to become the next sword saint, Speedy prepared to fight him with her greatest speed as well. Choi Sionha noticed this and wanted to warn them but Speedy had already charged towards Young Jun at full speed. Unexpectedly, Young Jun was able to react swiftly and turned around, parrying her attack before pushing her back and causing her to slam against the wall. All this happened before Sionha could finish warning them. Young Jun has been careful with his metabolic rate as he gets sober when he speeds up. With the recent attacks, the buzz from his rum was all gone and the now sober young Jun was furious, demanding Speedy to take responsibility for this. Speedy had finally realized that young Jun was stronger than she expected and decided to make a run for it. Before young Jun could interrogate her, Speedy had ran away to meet up with the other vampires but to her surprise, young Jun caught up with her easily and immobilized her by slashing at her limbs. After looking at the surroundings, young Jun asked Speedy how she was controlling these zombies. Realizing that she wouldn't answer any of his questions, he knocked her unconscious. He would clean up the mess first before continuing his interrogation. Jumping on the gate, he ordered Min Tae and the rest to go tie Speedy up and informed Choi Sionha that he would report his return after he was done with these zombies. Park Sung Mo wanted to offer his holy sword as it would be more effective against these zombies, but Young Jun rejected his offer. With an evil grin, he said that they would be more fun to destroy this way and began charging into the horde, slashing his way through. That evil grin reminded them of their sergeant Lee Hyun Wook, sending shivers down their spines. On the other end, Hyun Wook was still engaged in an intense fight with suits, blocking all his whip attacks using his bayonets. He requested Seo yun to head to the barracks to secure the weapons and save the soldiers as the skeletons are heading for them. yun asked what he was going to do to a vampire without holy power. However, Hyun Wook mentioned that it would be too difficult to fight suits while protecting her as she needed to get a holy power weapon. Up until this point, Hyun Wook's performance had been impressive. As such, Yun had decided to leave this to him and ordered him to make it out alive. Suits began to laugh, saying that they should be fighting together instead of sending her away. Hyun Wook laughed too, saying that he was glad to see Suits alive as it would mean that Suits' bosses did not know about him, since Suits probably held on to his life by reporting his failure as a mistake. Suits' anger at Hyun Wook's statement merely confirmed his suspicions. Hyun Wook said that letting him escape had been bothering him too much and he vowed to send Suits on a clean path to death. In a turn of events, Suits summoned his equipment, declaring that Hyun Wook had severely underestimated him as with his equipment, he would be on a different level than back then and his holy power beads would be no match for him. Looking at all the mana tank stones on his equipment, Hyun Wook merely thought that he was lucky to hit a jackpot as each of those stones are worth 1 billion won. As Suits continued to swear that Hyun Wook wouldn't be able to lay a finger on him anymore, Hyun Wook began to activate the skill effect of the Crown of Light and Darkness. It had the special effect of granting either Holy Power or Black Magic Aura to his equipment. After choosing Holy Power, all his weapons were granted the Holy Aura, surprising Suits. Hyun Wook clarified that he wouldn't be using beads anymore and vowed to divinely tear him into pieces. Despite witnessing the holy aura enveloping Hyun Wook's weapons, Suits remained steadfast in his belief that they posed no threat to him. As Hyun Wook continued to provoke him, Suits grew increasingly agitated and began launching his whips at him. The whips boasted a formidable reach and trajectory, capable of inflicting substantial damage upon impact. However, they proved vulnerable in close quarters combat. Seizing the opportunity, Hyun Wook skillfully evaded Suits' onslaught and closed the distance between them, aiming to strike with his weapons. Anticipating Hyun Wook's maneuver, Suits activated his equipment, unleashing a barrage of spikes that halted Hyun Wook's assault. Protected by his indomitable steel body, Hyun Wook narrowly avoided significant harm but found himself on the defensive, evading Suits' relentless attacks. As those spiked tentacles were not part of the equation, Suits was able to block Hyun Wook's close range attack that got through the whip's loophole. Hyun Wook's weapons were also trapped by those tentacles. 
and he knew that even the fail not arrow that he planned to use as his last strike in a long distance attack combo would also be stopped. Left with no alternative and despite the considerable mana cost, he unleashed the power of the Achilles spear once more, severing the whip. Recognizing that Suits had come here fully prepared after analyzing their previous fight and his calculated strategy to drag out the fight to expend all of Hyun Wook's mana, Hyun Wook refrained from expending all his mana on Suits, mindful of the presence of other vampires. At this time, Suits was confidently taunting Hyun Wook for yapping his mouth before. However, Hyun Wook still had a backup plan to deal with him and he called out to Choi Tae Yong over the walkie talkie. Upon receiving the order, Tae Yong immediately fired his sniper rifle at Suits from afar hitting him straight in the chest. As their location was now exposed by the gunshot, Tae Yong immediately moved to another location with his chase, Corporal Choi Min Jae. Suits cursed at Hyun Wook for all his petty tricks and Hyun Wook used this moment of distraction to fire the fail not arrow at him from behind. Hyun Wook then rushed forward to deal the final blow with his spear. As Suits collapsed, he cursed out loud in disbelief, believing that he couldn't have failed as he was the chosen one and demanded to know who Hyun Wook was. He was then shocked when Hyun Wook announced to him that he was an F ranker. With his final breath, he cursed Hyun Wook before disintegrating into ashes, unable to accept his defeat at the hands of an F ranker. Hyun Wook then excitedly collected all the mana tank stones that would amplify his mana. Judging by the time of absorption, he would eat half of them now and save the rest for later. He then rushed towards barracks number 2 after hearing that the skeleton army was attacking it. Looking at the number of skeleton soldiers swarming the barracks, Choi Tae Yong feared that the soldiers within wouldn't last long. Outside the barracks, the platoon leader attempted to run down as many skeletons as he could using his car but soon crashed into a wall and was easily cut down by them. Inside the barracks, Sergeant Kim Sihi rallied her troops, issuing orders to conserve mana and to break down the door of the armory as the keys were with the platoon leader. After seeing the skeletons climbing up the walls, she ordered the soldiers to stay away from the window. Hyun Wook was still on the way to the barracks, and he knew that there was someone inside that they could not afford to lose, and it was none other than Sergeant Kim Sihi. At this time, unbeknownst to her, a skeleton lurked behind Kim Sihi, poised to strike her with its sword. Baldi asked Carol, the blondie, whether they needed to open the gates in order as they could rush them all by opening all at once. However, Blondie wanted to toy with them and shatter their hope to survive. Their deliberations were interrupted by the arrival of Trenchcoat Vampire, who relayed news of the infiltration team's failure to reach the rendezvous point and they are now presumed dead. Baldi was surprised that they knew the battalion commander and the sword saint candidate were not here and began to speculate that it was likely due to the works of Seo Yunha, the daughter of the Holy Knight Order captain, who could be stronger than they expected. In response, Blondie directed Baldi, Kong Mok, to head down to wipe out the military command himself. Enraged, he slammed the giant column into the ground, activating an effect to turn this area into an assembly zone of evil. Proposing to confront Seo Yunha personally, Baldi was met with Blondie's assurance that she had her own plans for dealing with her. Summoning monstrous allies from a portal, Blondie intended to dispatch them to handle Seo Yunha. As Hyun Wook was rushing towards the barracks, he recalled that in a past life, two vampires made an appearance. Given the appearance of suits that wasn't in his memories, Hyun Wook can't help but wonder if there could be one more vampire. He knew that if Barracks 2 was being attacked by an unaccounted vampire, that vital person that they couldn't afford to lose could be in trouble. As he had arrived at the Barracks 2, Hyun Wook summoned the metal spikes hidden around the camp and charged at the army of skeletons, easily destroying them as he opened up a route to reach the Barracks and pray that Kim Sihi was still alive. Back in the Barracks, Kim Sihi was able to detect the skeleton behind her in time as she summoned her spirit to stop the sword before hitting her. She then used her spirit to knock the skeleton out of the barracks, after scolding it for appearing in the women's barracks completely without clothes like this. At this time, Hyun Wook had arrived in front of the barracks and saw the skeleton that was pushed out. He then jumped into the opening, prepared to rescue the soldiers but was surprised at the scene in front of him. Kim Sihi had already subdued the skeletons at attacking the barracks power was beyond Hyun Wook's expectations. Despite being a spirit sorcerer, she had a history of specializing in assassination. Five years later, she was deployed on a special mission to assassinate the king of the Orc Kingdom founded in Shanghai, Stonox. She then left a mark in history in her match to the death against the Orc King, which was why Hyun Wook wasn't with her when he officially started his duty as the Steel Emperor. While Hyun Wook was being embarrassed for abruptly entering the women's barracks, the door to the armory was finally opened. Hyun Wook requested them to get armed as soon as possible while he blocked this place. As his mana was not infinite, he wouldn't be able to last long so they needed to hurry up. At this time, 
Corporal Park Junmo informed Hyun Wook that most personnel from Barracks 1 had been evacuated and armed while Seo Yunha was on her way to Barracks 2. Hyun Wook then noticed a bright light from afar and before long, Seo Yunha had slashed her way to Barracks 2. Surprised to see Hyun Wook here, she asked what happened to the first vampire and Hyun Wook assured her that he was taken care of. Kim Sihi also reported that the personnel in Barracks 2 would soon be armed. Looking at Hyun Wook who evacuated Barracks 1 and even supporting Barracks 2, she thought that he had the entire situation figured out and gave him a deep soul-seeking stare, making him uncomfortable again. Suddenly, the system notification that the assembly zone of evil had been declared in the area appeared, granting the skeletons enhanced power. They then realized that a totem had been activated while Hyun Wook began plotting how to get to the totem before the rest since it was an item that was embedded with several delicious devil's medallions. Hyun Wook reported that Suits was probably not working alone. Although they did not understand how they were controlling the monsters, Yunha knew that this was an organized terror attack. She then ordered Sihi to maintain defensive positions here until reinforcements arrived while asking Hyun Wook to follow her to the command control room. In the underground bunker command control room, Lee Min Hee and Lee Won Suk were standing guard while the enemies were pounding on the bunker door. At this rate, the door, even with its double barrier, would be broken down soon. Won Suk knew that the person capable of breaking down the door would be above the level of an orc and it would be too risky fighting him in such a narrow space. He then asked Lee Min Hee to send them out with his warp skill once he gave the signal and transformed into his berserker mode. Even though this was too risky, Won Suk knew that they would have no chance against all the enemies if they were able to break down the door but he vowed to at least take down the person who broke the door, even if it kills him. Soon, the door was knocked down and Baldi entered the command room. Looking at Won Suk standing in his way, Baldi laughed at the thought of being challenged by him. Although scared and surprised by Baldi's gigantic size, Won Suk knew he couldn't back down and charged towards Baldi as he vowed to take him down. Earlier, Hyun Wook was training Private Lee Won Suk on how to control his mana as he had been thoughtlessly exploding the mana, causing his berserker mode to wear off quickly every time. Unforgiving, Hyun Wook continued to give him motivation with the stick while pushing him to learn how to control his mana. After Lee Won Suk was exhausted, he asked Hyun Wook a question. What should he do when facing an opponent who was stronger than him? Still a little annoyed with him, Hyun Wook said that he should just run away, as befitting of his character. Lee Won Suk swear that he was not that kind of person. Hyun Wook said that he should then fight the opponent head on. To act like a soldier and protect the comrades behind him and trust that his comrades would protect him as well. Recalling Hyun Wook's words, Won Suk knew that he couldn't back down even though he was scared. As Won Suk charged towards Baldi, he gave Lee Min Hee the signal to activate his portal behind Baldi as Won Suk pushed him through the portal. It brought them into an open area where Won Suk would be able to fight better and he activated his berserker mode. Baldi also excitedly summoned his equipment and prepared for a fight. Remembering Hyun Wook's lessons, Lee Won Suk finally managed to control his mana well and maintain at level 2 of the berserker body strengthening. He then charged at Baldi with all his determination to protect the ones behind him. As Hyun Wook accompanied Yunha to the command center, he wondered why she asked him to go as well when their priority should be to find the totem. Just then, they heard an explosion nearby and found Baldi grabbing onto a bloodied Won Suk. Looking at Hyun Wook, Won Suk proudly declared that he was indeed not the kind who just runs away before he was punched in the face by Baldi once again. At this time, Hyun Wook asked Seo Yunha to go to the control room first and gave instructions to search for the totem once she was there as he intended to stay here until he had defeated this vampire at all costs. Baldi was happy to see Yunha as it meant that he did not have to hunt her down himself but to his surprise, Yunha merely ran towards the control room after giving Hyun Wook the instructions to stay alive. Hyun Wook did not like Won Suk as he was just a brute that solely relies on his strength, but he had acknowledged his courage and fought with his life because of the one thing he said. As such, Hyun Wook would also put his life on the line and take revenge for him. He then crushed the mana tank to consume it, which granted him condensed mana, and began running towards Baldi. Just as Baldi thought that Hyun Wook would fight him head on, Hyun Wook slid through his legs before summoning his weapons to attack Baldi on his back. He then followed up by unleashing Achilles' spear power at Baldi but soon realized that his sneak attacks were not able to penetrate Baldi's defense. At this time, Baldi had wrapped himself in thick armor as he declared that these were just petty tricks and he would be disappointed if that was all Hyun Wook had after saying that he wanted to take revenge. He launched a kick at Hyun Wook but Hyun Wook was able to block it with his indomitable steel body. As he looked over to Won Suk's body, Baldi swiftly moved behind Hyun Wook, warning him not to be distracted during their match and the two began a game of cat and mouse. Before long, Baldi finally caught up to Hyun Wook and landed a punch that sent Hyun Wook crushing through the wall. 
Baldi continued to mock Yunwook as he wouldn't be able to damage him with just a few holy power weapons but soon regretted it as he heard the rumbling sounds in the room. Hyunwook acknowledged that the few weapons wouldn't be able to defeat him and that was why he brought Baldi into this room, the armory of the 3rd Anti-Magic Brigade 1st Battalion. With the whole room filled with weapons, Hyunwook prepared for his ulti, the indestructible, roaring torrent rush. As Hyunwook consumed another mana tank, he prepared for a fight till the death. It will be a battle to see if Hyunwook could get through Baldi's defense before he is defeated by Baldi.